Hello, everybody. We are here. It's D&D Valiant Odyssey. What's going on? We have the Wasonia files on a Thursday, and these guys are chatting in my ear about some stuff that you can't hear at the moment, and I'm doing that on purpose because they're bastards. And you can't hear us at the moment. All right. So before we start, all right, I'm putting you on. I'm putting you guys on. It's too much for me. <laughs> now be polite. Be polite, you scoundrels, you scallywags. You Hello, rappers. everyone. Best DM ever. Hello. Hello, Hello everybody. Hello. Welcome, I'll welcome, make sure welcome. when I take a drink, I'll lift up my little pinky there for you. Oh, okay. I'm going to plug this on socials for you. That Nothing sounds... but clean conversations here at the Valley Odyssey. Hey, look. We're, we're all mature gentlemen with mature... Uh, um, <laughs> what's the word here? Someone, someone fill me in. Oh, no, just just, just, just leave it at this, all right? Just leave it at this. We all drink with a raised pinky <laughs> and a monocle. That's what we do here at Valley Odyssey. Um, what's going and on, Joey? Yet, how are you? Make sure you are in there saying hello to us today. We definitely read it. Uh, however, obviously, we sometimes don't get to your comments in a timely manner because we are playing, but we will get there eventually. Um, so today, before we kick off our proceedings, let's have a big old message from our amazing, fantastic sponsors, Oz Dice. Guys, Oz Dice okay. is. Ozdice. Sorry, the bard had to do it. That's all right. Ozdice is an amazing company that is Australian owned at www.ozdice.com.au. They will send you your dice for a price and that price is very reasonable and even more so with our Odyssey 5 discount code. So if you wanted to get that, you need to press exclamation mark code and it will take you to their website with our uh, custom link and you can shop to your heart's content and get a sweet sweet ass discount courtesy of us and courtesy of Oz Dice. so thank you Oz Dice, for sponsoring everything we do we absolutely love you and uh go check out their socials as well because they they post lots of sexy dice pics so if you're into that sort of thing then make sure you go and follow them because oh, i definitely am um and with that being in so mind <laughs> With that being in mind, this month is Valiant Odyssey's birthday. <gasps> what? Happy birthday, Happy birthday, birthday to you. A big oh, one. one. You're learning it's down here. Years we can drink. It's true. It's true. We are indeed one big year old here at Valiant Odyssey. Not this particular stream, but we have been producing D&D content for one year in our podcast setting. Uh, this came as a result of that. So if you haven't already, go and check out our podcast because that's where our core stories come from. This is actually a spin-off Twitch stream from that content, but in 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 celebratory fashion because it's our birthday, uh, we have a couple of giveaways going on because, you know, when it's your birthday, you give to other people. That's just what happens. God, tell us all about it. How you doing? You want to know about it, Sven? I'll tell you all about yeah, it. Yeah, I do. I would love to. Okay, so if you join our Discord at exclamation mark Discord and you post a picture of your Hero Forge miniature right now in our Discord, you can win a $25 voucher for that uh, that online company. And you know what you can do what? with it? You can get your own what? mini from Hero Forge. A yeah. mini? 100%. Yeah. Oh, are you saying that they could get a mini of Praxelius Erdenatul made? I mean, they absolutely could. They'd have to make it size yes, appropriate can, so. too. So he'd be really, really okay. tiny, but he'd have a really massive set of armor. Ego. I wonder yeah. if after or, we purchased the mini, would there be anyone around us that would be able to print that off for us? Well, um, funny you should mention that, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Josh Herlock. Uh, me? His full name. He doxed you <laughs> hard. You can find it. You can get in touch on our G-coded uh, customs at gmail.com and that's coded with a 3d for 3d printing there you go so we have our own very special uh rob here who does 3d printing so if you do get your your files from hero forge with the voucher he can surely print it off and you just have to contact me at dnd valley and Odyssey, and i'll pass you on the details for that little bad boy um you know what there's not just one giveaway what? going on boys there's not just one do you know how many there are it's not 78 it's Two. Is, oh, okay. is there three? Oh. There's two. Okay. That's actually more Ooh. reasonable than seven mm -hmm. now that I think about it. I'm uh -huh. turning one. Hey, Mod Brew, what's going on? We are turning <laughs> one, but there is two giveaways, one on Discord and one that's Twitch Central. So if you press oh. exclamation mark giveaway right now, you can purchase tickets to win our dice pack courtesy of Oz Dice. The dice pack will be sent directly to your door, and it contains three sets of polyhedral dice, one set of metallic D6 dice, one Ooh. dice bag, one dice slab, and... Ooh. 
you know, it'll be nicely packaged and sent to you and it'll be awesome. So if you want some D&D stuff for free, dice especially, make sure you use your watching points, your renown and your gold to buy those tickets and enter. That will be drawn on the 31st of August on our stream, so don't miss it. And we'll also be posting on our socials as well. So that's all our announcements. Goodness me, that was a mouthful. It was. It was a mouthful, Aaron. It was. You've done well. You've done well. Thank you. Now, while well, I'll have a break, um, Sven joins us here from Crit and Miss. He has his very oh. own D&D channel, and he is going, boom, boom. To, he's going to, to spout some of his stuff that's happening while I have a well-needed uh, respite from my voice. So take it away, Sven. What's Crit and Miss got happening? <laughs> Oh God! Oh God! You really put me uh, put me on the spotlight here. I wasn't expecting this so early on in the night. But uh, yeah, guys, check out uh, Crit and Miss on Twitch. So it's twitch.tv um, slash crit underscore n underscore miss, um, where you can find links to our Discord and Facebook and all that kind of stuff. We do D and D actual play live streams uh, pretty much every week uh, these days. Tomorrow night we. have have the next episode of Out of the Abyss coming up, which is our uh, long-running, uh, persistent Dungeon Dragon 5th Edition campaign. Um, next week, let me think, what do we have? Uh, we have Call of Cthulhu. Uh, we have the next episode of Critical Conversations with uh, Evan Winston. Um, and if you want to go into draw to win a uh, free art commission from Evan Winston, make sure you jump in our Discord and leave a message in the drawingsanddragons.com uh, channel to or join us live on Twitch next week on Saturday night. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what we have coming up, I think. But there could be more because my mind is a mess. It is a mess. Well done, Sven. Okay, and already, guys, we have some amazing contribution in chat. I have already redeemed some points for Modbrew and Herlox, who are starting to convert their renown to gold as we speak. But you guys can also do some amazing things with your renown points throughout our game tonight. You can use those points to give players advantage to give me the DM advantage, and Mod Brew has already so graciously given me one. And you can also pay to give natural 20s. So... Uh, keep some points for yourselves and, uh, you know, spend them on the game tonight as well because we love to get that interaction from you. It actually gives a little bit of a little bit of chaos into our regular D&D game. A little flavor. Spice. Say it like Varys. Spice. The flavor. Flavor. All right. So without further ado, guys, we are going to introduce our characters. So you guys are going to roll for the first time tonight. And once you do... You will introduce yourselves by name, race, class, and today you are going to tell me that if your character found one million gold, what would they do with it? If your characters had one million gold, what would they do with it? So we have Zen with a roll of 11 so far. So roughly, uh, roughly translated uh, to Australian dollars, what's uh, what does one million gold translate to? Uh, one gold. <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> in that case, the you mean what would they do in game? Is that right? Yes, of course. Not, not what you would not. do as a as a person, Robert. Well, you know, do um, lots of things. So, Praxilius, with a confounding natural one. You are going to go first, and then we're going to go to Zendardus, and then we'll go to Micro, and we'll finish off with Varus, and then maybe, Ooh. you know, we'll start the game. So, name, race, class, what will your character would do with a million dollary dues, as we call it in Australia? Off you go. Natural one, a sign of things to come. Um, my name is Sven. I play Praxilius Ethdenator, the dwarven artificer. Um, and if he had... A million gold. I mean, I don't even know where to start with a million gold, but I mean, the first thing that he would do is he would make the most beautiful suit of power armor that you've ever seen. Think Fallout, um, but just gold plated uh, with silver filigree, maybe a couple of jetpacks, maybe um, some, I don't know, shields that pop out of his arm or something like that. Uh, that would be his first go-to. Uh, other than that, I mean, really, I need more time to think about it. That's a, that's a lot of gold to drop on someone unexpectedly. That's a big question. Obviously not an impulse spender. Um, no. With that, we'll move on to Zendardus. Name race class, what would you do with a million goldy boys? 
Yes, yeah, so as you can see here, I am Zendardis. As you can see here, I am a Sorlock. Uh, and I'm a half-elf, half-tiefling, uh, which you can't see at this point, but hopefully one day. Uh, if he has a million dollar dollaritos, he would probably invest in a space flight program. Oh, that Praxilius would be all on that. He would, he'd be there. He'd be designing stuff for you. I like it. All right, Micah. Look, million dollars <clears throat> straight up, Micah. Look, we know you're keen, but you got to tell us what you are first. <laughs> no, I, I had it all planned out. I've been thinking the whole time. Okay, okay, I believe Lottery it. Lottery tickets. No, no, it's, fine. it's fine. Yeah, it doesn't happen often. Uh, no, human paladin. Uh, we are level six now, so that's a little bit cheeky. Here we are. Um, million dollars, I would sue my ex-wife and get custody of the house. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, he would. He would definitely wouldn't be going back to school to earn a tertiary degree. Uh, we Elmo. have <laughs> next up, last but not least, the face of the party and definitely the mustache. It is Varus. What is going on, my man? It's cooking at the moment, boys. I uh, intend to uh, shave the rest of it off and have this for next stream, maybe. But we shall see. It is Rob. I am playing Varus Waylon, a half elf bard warlock. Um, and we are, yes, level six. Uh, if Varus had a million gold, oh, I think he would, um, he'd invest in a cloak that not only changed his, its appearance to whatever he so pleased, but he would also have one that sort of put up a bit of a, uh, I think mask of many faces, but in cloak form, like a holographic, basically. Uh, like uh, a into, major image into, sort of deal. Correct, yeah. So he really would like invest in one that was um, heavily uh, modified, I would say. And then he would pay off his mother and father's debt for their ranch um, where they breed relic slots. Look, Aaron, I remembered. Good and, for you, um, man. Good for you. I, en you. I enjoy you. when you remember law dumps. <laughs> it makes me happy as a DM. <laughs> and I think with the rest of it, he buy himself a... A humble little place out in the countryside with a cellar full of boutique wine. Oh, mate. Sounds like a planned out future. I absolutely love it. Um, and speaking of, you know, uh, comical things, Extreme Fart Zone, welcome into the chat. I love your name, man. Love your name. Welcome back. <laughs> <laughs> love to have you here. Oh, well. Um, all right, so guys, we're going to get into a recap and then after that we'll get stuck straight into our game. So uh, in your very first episode, you guys went to the Bean and Gone Cafe to meet your patron Javandesh where a concert was being held and that concert has the Hysterical Impulse band. However, the band wasn't the main attraction. Two dead girls out in the courtyard was. Uh, after the festivities were over, you found these two and it seemed that they had an overdosed problem from a drug called Morph. You investigated here, there and everywhere and eventually found out that the Morph needed to be a dead end, but you did track these girls to the Cryogenics Glaciology Laboratory where you found that their bodies had been switched with cadavers and they had been done so because these bodies of these girls had been changed. They'd been changed because when you saw them, and you saw them because one of them had reanimated and grabbed the ankle of Varus, they had a completely spherical hole in the top of their head, and they attempted to suck the living life out of Varus' body. After doing so and being freaked out by one of these dead reanimated girls, you ran back to your homes and decided that, you know what, enough's enough, we're going to turn this into the authorities, let them deal with it, and we're just going to continue on our merry school day. So you did the next day of classes, you decided to go and liaise with each other at the marketplace and you found out that uh, the longtime friend and companion of Micah whose name is Fizz actually met a pretty curious end one that seems very familiar to you now you also found out that uh, Zendardus's father Xanafred is going on a uh, research mission to the north to Bastion and there was a party of, of uh, academics that left before him most notably his friend a fire Janasi with a monobrow left the morning before and he is eager to leave and wants to recruit and that's why he is at market day and he also low-key wants Zendardus to go with him uh, but so far he has refused so after Praxilius was able to barter with A67, a defunct guide bot, and sent him back to his laboratory, you all now gather in the market square. And we set the scene now with many various different coloured tents rolling around your vision. 
As you look from tent to tent, you can see happy faces of student and staff all about the Wasonian campus. You stand in the commons and you are surrounded by greens, whites and blues. Everything is clean here. You see some birds fly by and you hear the sounds of laughter and music in the air. The sense of cooking meats hits your nostril as you make your way through the common streets and you look above you and you can see the floating, rotating rocks of geometric shapes that seem to mark the commons area of the campus. As you look towards the manicured gardens, there is nothing more beautiful than these hedge mazes that seem to be perfectly cut and well-maintained. You can see everybody seems to be in full swing. Most people not knowing of the events that had been transpiring in the underbelly of this city, or this school rather, but you four do. You stand together after just having a very frank conversation with Zervais. He now attempts to track down those who killed his girlfriend and lover, Orabella, a woman who you know was reanimated the night before and is not particularly as she once was. However, he still thinks was subject to an overdose. So leading him off on a wild goose chase as you guys begin to stand there, what would you all like to do? Mm. Mm. It's a carnival for signing up to clubs, so I guess Sen would like to check out what kind of clubs are available to be signed up with. Do we think maybe we have a sniff around at different clubs and then agree to meet for a coffee and like and actually talk about all that info that we just got dumped onto us? Yeah, uh, I think that's a uh, that's a really good idea because uh, I was definitely above the table, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, what, yeah like, I don't wow. know, maybe we maybe grab a coffee later and just I don't know find some clubs to join. Like I'd love to meet more new people because I love that. Man, you need to sound a little bit more upbeat when you speak. Like, sometimes I don't know whether you're like happy, sad, somewhere in between. I, just, I share a room with you. You can draw your own conclusions. And I'm the most joyful person around. I don't know why it's not rubbing well, up over you, you yet. Well, you can do a dot to dot, I take it. I meant rubbing off, not rubbing up, because I don't want to rub off on you, man. But um, anyway, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just need to break yourself out of this funk and shit, man. Last time I did that, uh, I, uh, I got in trouble for licking stuff off the ground. So, you know, here we are. That was not advisable, but anyway. You can't pick and choose. Well, anyway, do we just, yeah, like, I still need a morning coffee. I still feel like shit. I would too if I uh, ingested an uh, illicit oh. substance, but anyway. Yeah, yeah sure. You know I'm getting grilled from Teague for this, right? He thinks I'm involved. And now i got a roommate that's been doing that shit. And I, I'm doing an investigation into, into what's happened. Like, found a missing body girl, and I'm trying to get to the bottom of it by finding out what could have caused that. But sure, yeah, you, you, you keep going, keep going. No, 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 I'm, I'm agreed. We are both on doing the same thing. It's just some methods are a little different. To others, I guess. Uh, each to their own. Mr. Uh, Mr. Micah. I think I said it right this time. I got over doing the whole Mika thing. I felt like I was pissing you off a little bit. <laughs> Finally, someone acknowledges me for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Dardis, roll an investigation yeah. check for me, Zen. Roger, Dodger. Yeah, 13. Okay, so looking around, you can see lots of different stands. Most of them seem to be selling foods of some sort uh, from different sorts of cultures. You can see two goblins that seem to be cooking some some rat-looking creatures, and they're on like a kebab. And they seem to be – students seem to be buying them just for the uh, the fact that they can say that they bought and eat this food. But the rats seem to be taking in the gold nonetheless, This these goblin-like creatures, sorry. Um, as you look around, you can see one stand seems to house a uh, purple grey haired individual who you have seen before as a reporter who seems to be um, trying to sign people up to, to be uh, researchers for the paper. You also see uh, looking down there is a Majors of Faith Institute where they are trying to bring back uh, religious 
uh, religious scriptures that used to be taught in um, in Wasonia, but are no longer done so due to the fact that the gods use, they're they're not as strong of a of a presence in the realm anymore. Uh, you also see uh, a silk ball tent, and you can see that there is a actual uh, a full on circular tent that seems to be uh, red in nature. The flaps that seem to be sort of pulled back, and everybody seems to be looking in at this display that's sort of happening as people start to kick this silken ball up into the air and use various different magics like gusts to sort of keep it aloft, and they're hitting it between their teams. Uh, with a thirteen, you also see a live action role playing club that seems to be uh, sponsored by one of the professors. In particular, a professor you know, Professor Rixie, seems to be there. And you watch as she's standing there trying to guide students in, and you watch as she changes her face every single time a new student comes and a new character presents itself. Uh, so that is what you see. And your father taps you on the shoulder and he says, uh, Zendardis, it might be a good idea to explore the, the campus, but. Um, if you are looking for something to sign up to, my offer still stands about coming on the academic research venture in the north. It is Bastion. It's the closest to the northern lights and the crossing of the realms we may get in, in your lifetime. Yes, it is quite tempting, but I'm still unsure. Like I've said, I've spent a lot of time away from this school, and honestly, I feel like my studies are lacking because of it. Well, that is very mature of you, but you know as well as I that some of the most potent learning occurs in the field. In it is, the field. It is why I volunteered you to go to see Arden in the first place. I'm sorry that didn't work out as you had expected, <clears throat> but this will be uh, a much safer trip, I can assure you. There'll be much more note-taking, looking at the stars. No no funny business. Yes, yeah, well, it is quite more tempting than the other one, uh, but still, for now... Let me explore and see what I can find. Very well. Look, we we leave at dusk. Uh, if we are going to catch up with my friend who left uh, yesterday evening, then then myself and the rest of the academics in my team will need to, to make our way to the teleporter by then. Please, if you have uh, changed your mind, I'll meet you there. We'll try to find you before you leave, uh, Father, before... Yes, and, send off uh, at the very least, of course. At the very least, of course. I'm sure Micah would like to see you leave as well. Ah, uh, yes, your your dear friend Micah. He um he is definitely uh, more than welcome to join us too if he wants to get his his adventuring feet on again. I'll um and I'll head off. Start having a look. Sorry. All good. Does um. Does Barris hear this conversation that's just gone down? Like, oh, we're, we're all in a You're group. all together. Yeah, yeah. Within, oh, He's okay. sitting in front of you. Oh. So, at the word, you know, that they're traveling to Bastion, um, Varus is going to prick up and say, uh, uh, excuse me, sir, um, older older Zen, you look identical. It's really hard to tell the difference. Um, I'm his you mentioned father. you're going to, yeah, uh, uh, yep, I gathered. Uh, what was your name again, sir? Xanafrid is my oh, name. Xanafrid. Ah, yes. Aren't you? You're you're known around campus, aren't you, sir? Oh, very much so. I am uh, one of the the head lecturers over at the Lolosa uh, College, but I sometimes venture out into the commons as well. Uh, my research is um is paramount in its field. Uh, I also supplied the Valiant Odyssey Guild with the magnetometer that is helping them on one of their most potent quests. Uh, well. You, I don't know any more that's, details uh, than that. They didn't tell me. Impressive feat, sir. Um, well, Mr. Zenniford, uh, you mentioned you were going to uh, travel to Bastion. Is that correct? Indeed. A research team of some 20 of us are going. Uh, unfortunately, wow. I'm on the back end of that, and myself and six others will be leaving at dusk to accompany our, our other allies. Just uh, a bit curious. I had a... Uh... Had an acquaintance there previously um, that my parents knew, uh, Mr. Professor Oslo. I'm just uh, wondering if you, uh, you know, if uh, he's around or if he's been seen lately. Uh, they reckon uh, he's gone a bit quiet. Hmm. Professor Oslo, you say? Well, I have been here for quite some time, and I do remember that name coming across my desk as a potential professor and lecturer, but I don't think anything ever came of it. Um, 
If he was hired, then he wasn't put into my department. I do apologize. It's not much to go on. Mm. Yeah, no, I, uh, I think he was uh, considered for the role that uh, Professor Nagin is now in, if I, if I do believe my information is correct. Ah, Professor Nagin. Yes, he's a very curious fellow. For a man that has uh, dedicated his life to teaching students, he sure doesn't like uh, young people very much. That is my observation. Hmm. Well, uh, I might have a chat to these gentlemen here, and maybe we could uh, assist you in some way and uh, visit this bastion and see what we can do. But uh, we've got a bit to tidy up around here. When did you say you're leaving again? We'll be leaving at dusk, and at the very least, I do expect Zendardus to come and see me off at the uh, the teleporter, which is just at the, the southern end of the commons. Uh, you're welcome to, to join him if you'd like, but... Um, but yes, I think that the expedition uh, itself, it may not be quite a good fit for you, young sir. No offense. And he sort of taps you on the shoulder twice. You don't look oh. like the kind who would um, take to, how do I say this politely? Um, roughing it. Mm, well, I don't particularly enjoy it. That is for sure. Got you pegged. Well, I meant no offense by it, and uh, you could be, you know, you don't judge people by their their cover. I've, I've learned that throughout my life, most definitely. Raxilius puts his hand up. Uh, yes, young young studious dwarf in the front. Oh, yeah. Is that, oh, can I first say it's uh, it's uh, it, it is very nice nice to meet you. Uh, if if I go, could I uh, get extra extra credit or something? Um. Uh, well, once again, I don't think that the expedition requires someone of your expertise. I mean, he's not good at at at, uh, at, at roughing it, but that's kind of my thing. <laughs> well, he's still dirty from the night before. What? What are your uh, qualifications? How how might you best benefit a research expedition in the far north where temperatures are cold and the knowledge is ever producing? Oh wait, did you did you say cold? Extremely to the north, in the mountains. Oh, Bastion. It sits uh, right in the middle of two mountain tops. It is the last known civilized location before the outer wilds. Oh, uh, you know what? Actually, I've got I've got a thing. I'm sorry, I forgot. Of of no. course, our schedules often fill. It is fine. Look, I will see you in. You know, but if if, you, if you're ever doing something in a more sort of uh, temperate climate, maybe something with a beach house, and he looks over towards Micah, then maybe uh, I can I can tag along and I can make myself very useful. I will keep you in mind for the placement, Master Dwarf. Oh, but, uh, thank you. Um, And as he's talking to you, you do see some of his research assistants taking down some names for some people to come along on the expedition, just as, like, baggage handlers and things like that. And he looks behind, talks to one of his friends, and uh, the conversation's a little bit out of earshot of you four, but he turns back around to you after a moment. He says, well, it seems like we've collected enough interest. Uh, me and my associates are going to go off for a spot of tea. You enjoy the marketplace now, won't you, son? And your friends? And you watch as he turns around and he says, I'm so excited for you, Zendatas. Finally have some friends. And he begins to walk away. Thank you. All right. What are the rest of you doing? Can I see if I can um, spot Megan or what is the vase and um, Castley doing and the reporter? Does she look like she's looking around a bit? Like get a bit of a... Yeah. Everybody roll perception checks, please. Wow. Perception checks. That's your 20. Oh, <laughs> Say that quicker Bubble. with more excitement, brother. Yeah, go on, man. <laughs> Good Good on. Right. Anyway. Four natural. Um, yeah, four or what? Sorry, Zendaz. Oh, shit. I rolled high, too. All right. Look at him, guys. I unsurprisingly did not roll high. 
I also rolled a dirty 20. Okay. Ooh. So. I rolled a 21. Yeah. Praxilius. As you begin to look around the marketplace, the smell of food hits your nostrils, and then you hear a jangling sound. Oh, oh. You look down to the floor and you can see somebody's just dropped some of their money and they're continuing to uh, to walk on as if they've forgotten it. That takes your attention, basically. The rest of you look mm-hmm. around and uh, Varys, you track where Zervais has gone after your brief conversation just recently. And mm-hmm. as you do, you can see him just sort of standing off by uh, a post near one of the thick trees and he's just sort of smoking a cigarette and Castley's there with him. They seem to be in conversation just by themselves. Uh, they don't appear to be looking your way or anything like that. They don't seem to be taking notice of you. Same goes for the reporter at the Wissonian Star. As you look around, though, you do see the pot belly of Professor Nagin and he seems to be gnawing on a... Um, on a kebab that seems to have this woven uh, meat around it. And as he seems to be talking to another professor, he sort of meets your eye and he gives you this scowl. And you watch as he just sort of does the old um, boss Nass from Star Wars. And, and you watch as he just continues to walk off in the direction. Funnily enough, as he walks away, all of you notice he did that in Varys' direction. You can see he's leaving wet footprints as he goes. Puddles almost. Hmm, that is one slippery son of a bitch, and I can't wait to figure out what his deal is, to be honest. I got his class soon, guys. I don't even know what to do about that. Well, what's he teaching? Yeah. Moisturize a lot. <clears throat> well, <laughs> moisturize. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> fuck yeah. <laughs> um, I got him. I got him. He did. <laughs> well, uh, he's uh, teaching uh, like a fire sort of subject, man. It's called Great Balls of Fire. I mean, he's wet. Like, the two and two don't go together. I just, I'm just i confused. So I can't wait to see uh, what becomes of it, really, to be honest. Well, I mean, if someone's going to teach a, a, a class about f- fiery balls... It's good to have someone there that can put out the uh, the, the mess, if you know what I mean. Right? With it's his, a smart with thinking. Nature. I mean, he's teaching it, though. Like, it's, it's like he's a personal fucking fire extinguisher. Like, I don't, even, I don't know what to do, man. Weird. Strange. Strange. Fire though. extinguisher, you say. Fire extinguisher. Now, as, that's a good idea. As you say that, you hear this squealing sound, this... And you watch as the crowd begins to part in front of you. You watch as these uh, as people get jostled around in front of you. And you can see in the crowd, people are starting to get bumped and knocked over. Uh, as you begin to watch this thing come through the crowd, you watch as it sort of parts and jumps out straight in front of you. And what you're looking at is about a foot long pink piglet. And around that piglet, there seems to be a collar. And that collar has like a satchel attached to it. And you watch then as the piglet jumps out and then darts off to the left through the crowd. And you watch then as about five other people begin to rush out after it look towards you and you can see one guy's wearing goggles and he seems to be quite fat and obese but he only he has no shirt on and he's got this red beard and he looks to you and he says hey you see a pig go around here i point to the left they they run to the right right. (laughs) (laughs) you watch as the party of them begin to split you watch as the big guy goes you go this way you guys come with me we're gonna catch that pig he's got our prize and you watch as they just dart off to either side and you watch as they continue to run through the crowd um it's at that point you watch as the people begin to murmur and as they do your ears sort of prick up because you want to like you're listening for them as they they go away um and then you hear it this seems to be an explosion coming from your west what would you like to do you watch as the people around you are just like "Ah," and duck undercover oh explosive pigs (laughs) please tell me that there's a fireworks display or something it could be could be that probably makes more sense than an explosive pig it's actually not a very that wasn't a very good idea maybe we should go and uh go and have a look i like myself a good explosion 
I mean, now, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, oh. before we do that, remember what happened last time we decided to go and investigate something clearly dangerous? Remember what happened last night? Yeah, it turned out that. No, I can't remember what happened. Exactly, because I'm pretty sure you got a concussion. Oh, look, there's some gold on the floor over there. He <laughs> picks it up. Good I'm segue. just saying, maybe we shouldn't head towards the giant explosion noise. You watch as the Wait. people around you are starting to crowd that direction. They're just, yeah. And you hear somebody oh. say, I wonder what that was. Oh, it looked like it came from over here. Uh, what, are you saying... what is in that direction that we know? So. Uh, down that direction, you can see more stalls and uh, tents, and you can also see what looks like a couple of buildings nestled together, and there seems to be a bit of an open space as well. Uh, you see, as you as you watch, people seem to be flooding out of the tents to try and look, and people are craning their necks. You watch as uh, a, a set of gnomes just sort of jump on top of each other, and they're like four standing on top of one another, and the top one looks down. And they say, it came from over there! And you watch as they all begin to rush in that direction. I mean, I'm no yes. like, expert on this, but like rushing towards a big blast of sound... Mm. Seems like a little bit of a weird thing to do. I mean, oh. Maka, you were about to say something. Sorry, I cut you off. I was, I was, I was just gonna say, let's just go have a look as well. And then I'm just gonna, Maka's gonna start walking. But I'm also gonna, I know you didn't mention it, but I'm also trying to hoping that on camp is like an animal handling club or like a, like a stranger thing, stranger beasts, and like maybe where to find sort of club. All right, I'll get you to roll an investigation check as you're walking. Everybody else following Micah, or is he just going by himself? How much uh, gold what? did I pick up? Uh, you would have picked up about 13 gold. Oh, 13 gold pieces. That's not bad for a day's work. I can't uh, remember I'm what I did to earn you. this. Oh, oh not fair about Hey, uh, I thought you could make them flat for like 750 gold, man. I don't know why it's ground around the ground here. You got a unique talent that you can utilize there, my friend. Oh, yeah, no, there's that. But I'm working on something different now. You're going to like it. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, 13 gold's nothing to turn your, turn your nose up to. And, and besides, the last time I made one of those flasks, uh, two girls died. So I think maybe... I just stick uh, to not selling alcohol, I think, for a while. Oh, I don't think that was your fault, my friend. But, uh, I mean, you know, easy money. I, I know what you mean. I'm a bit of a gambler man myself, to be honest. But uh, oh. we'll, we'll chat about that later. And, uh, of course. You know, you, you're a friend of mine. I, I could split it with you. Do you want a couple of gold pieces as well? Maybe you can buy yourself something nice, uh, oh. a mustache comb or a... Uh, or maybe some beard oil or something like that. No, no, no. You keep your uh, you keep your gold. I'm uh, more than adequately secure with my finances. Thank you, Prax. Oh, all right. Well, I mean, none of us have a beach house that we didn't tell anyone about. No, well, I guess that, that was uh, Micah. That was we me. Can, we I don't can, know yeah, yeah. Oh, we, 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 I got you. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, just just to interrupt you guys, thank you so much, uh, Mims, a lot for your raid. Party of 13, welcome on in to Valiant Odyssey. This is with Sonia Files. Settle on in. Uh, do some gambling if you want to with exclamation mark gamble, and we have a giveaway happening too. So press exclamation mark giveaway uh, once you earn some points, and you can buy a ticket to win some dice. Uh, and sit down and enjoy some role play. All right, so... Bobby says gamble responsibly. Oh, yes, of course, gamble responsibly. Never. We don't, we don't, we, we don't gamble responsibly around here. With fictional currency. Um, so, yeah, Micah, as you begin walking around, you're trying to look for the pig, but you're unable to do so, and you don't really see any tents that denote any sort of animal handling either. You guys begin to push your way through the crowd, and you start to hear more of these explosions. This you hear this, this crackle, and then you hear a... And as you do, and you push through the front of the crowd, the four of you standing there, you can see three mages that seem to be standing on the stage and one announcer that seems to be wearing this flamboyant-looking coat. And you watch as he sort of points a wand to his throat and his voice begins to boom through the college. And as he does so, he says, Ladies and gentlemen, the annual pyrotechnics competition of the Wasonia Institute Market Open Day is now 
in session. As you know, the three mages that are participating will be up for the grand prize of, and you watch as he conjures up this um this wooden wand, and you can see it's got these flecks of gold through it, and you can see it just sort of sparks as it does. And he goes, the wand of pyrotechnics up for grabs for one of these three lucky individuals, but... As per tradition, we also elect one member of the crowd in order to participate as well for this grand prize and prestigious honor of the Light King of the Market. So, who will it be? Anybody in the audience brave enough, wise enough, magical enough to cast this pyrotechnic spell and wow us with your dazzling designs of light and fire? And you watch as he says that, he just blows fire like... As you see him, he's definitely a showman. He has this black slicked hair that seems to be pushed across his face. His sideburns are curled into rings, and you can see that he's just got a sole patch of facial hair there. You can see he's got dark uh, eye shadow, one purple eye and one blue eye, but he seems to be human. And as he's resting, his hands are on his, his jacket that seems to be red and very, very, very well made. He looks out to the crowd peering, and you watch as he's sort of pointing at different people. Um... If you would like, and has his hand raised. If you, yeah, if you would like to participate, uh, you need to tell me how you are going to get his attention. Ooh. Oh, I don't. It's not in Mike's character participate, but me. What, that's the player. What are we participating <laughs> against? Sorry, I missed something. Um, yeah, I want to. I want to hear what we have to do. What? Did, what was the? It's a what pyrotechnics the, um, competition. You have to show fire fireworks, an artistic uh -huh. display of fireworks, and if you do that, you're able to win. You have to show We're your winning. control of the arcana. Micah raises his hand and yells out, what are we winning? Uh, he did display a uh, wand of pyrotechnics. Right. I cause all the... Uh, I cast control flames uh, and double all of the fire that's currently around like all of the lamps Son and everything bitch. just glow bright okay um as you do that you all take a step away from zendardus and look at him and you can see his his eyes are sort of glowing that orange and all of the fire just like like torrents like at football games when a when a team scores and you can see them go like halfway into the sky and everybody moves away you can see one guy's eyebrows are sort of singed this guy with long eyebrows is just sort of putting them out as best that he can zendardus you're just standing there this big smile on your face and everybody else looks towards him for in your party thinking to yourselves, this was the guy who didn't want to go towards the explosions and is now creating mass fire. Uh, but I would like you to roll your choice of performance or arcana to see if this gentleman is wowed by your display. Uh, if anybody else wants to join or, or compete, you are able to uh, help Zendardus or try and throw your hat in the ring yourself by doing something on your own. Could I help Zendardus? But yeah. it's a bit of a it's a bit of an unorthodox uh, idea that I have here. I love them. So Explain it to I'd me, have to and I'll see if I can give Zendardus you. some advantage. What do you What do you reckon? So as uh, as per our fight with the with the bog creatures in the, in, in Swansville, uh, when he cast enlarge reduce, um, is there a way I could potentially I don't know enlarge the effects of his spell that he's casting or, or something along those lines. Um, uh, I will say if you have anything that you can do to fire to make it go larger, like if you have any objects, non-magical or magical, to make it go larger, you can do it without casting the spell. Uh, so objects, magical or non-magical. So uh, I do have something uh, that I can do uh, called magical tinkering, uh, imbuing a, a, a tiny... Magical object uh, with the property of my choice, five feet of light, uh, a recorded message, uh, odor or a nonverbal sound or a static visual effect. I will say that you can use that to enhance the visual effect of the fire in some way. So I'll say it is glowing this orange-like flare. Uh, what would you do to add to it to apply advantage to uh, Zendardus's role? Um, 
So uh, describe to me what again what the what the what does the spell look like that he's doing? So he's basically just causing the fire to shoot out of the uh, the torch lights even further into the sky. So they look like massive flamethrowers that seem to be uh, throwing themselves into the air. All right. So um, depending on, on on your ruling, I guess I can use all three of my magical tinkering if you'll allow it to uh, tinker with um, like some of those small ball bearings that he used in, uh, in episode one to communicate in the uh, concert. Yep. And he will imbue them, um, maybe one of them with a static visual effect of maybe some type of colored light, maybe one of them with like uh, some type of sweet aroma and maybe another one uh, with like a like a magical whooshing sound of, of some sort. And he'll see if he can just sort of cast those into the fire at the same time to give it a little bit of extra finesse. Absolutely. You may roll with advantage, Zendardus. Would anybody else like to enter the competition in some way? Um, no, uh, I think Varus will sit back <laughs> and relax, to be honest. I'm going to... Mike is going to enter. Yep, and Mike is just going to have a mental, uh, me- mental conversation with Fizz. Um, what do you say? I'm going to throw this spear, and I'm going to hit one of those torches. And as I hit it, you're going to make, you're just going to explode with green energy. Well, that sounds great, but uh, what have you done for me lately? I mean, we worked out. Uh, you, you just saw everything that I did with the photo that you picked out. I guess that was kind of nice. Okay, throw the spear. Um, and I'm also gonna throw the spear, and I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna burn a spell slot and make it a uh, searing smite. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll allow, I'll allow it if you burn a smite. <laughs> so roll the attack. Anything a ten and above will hit your target. Uh, I'm going to expend my inspiration oh, because yes. <laughs> I, I've only rolled an eleven. <laughs> You're welcome for that extra one, by the way. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> That's a, a 21 to hit. Okay. Wow. Whoa. So, Zendardus, you're standing there. Yeah. These flames protruding into the air. They're looking very impressive. Praxilius, you provide the extra scent to the flames. You can smell varying different perfumes coming off them. You can see this uh, firefly sort of light coming off them as well and starting to glow. Uh and it's at that point they just start to get doused down. You hear the announcer say, "Ah, oh, it appears that we have our... And as he says that, you see this green javelin just sear straight past your ear and through the air. You can feel your hair just sort of brush as it passes you. It hits directly onto the stage in front of the announcer, and as it does so, it flashes in this green light, and you hear this... <laughs> and as it does, you hear Fizz's laughter as a green explosion occurs, just... And it's almost like the seismic charge off of uh, Attack of the Clones. It's like... And then as it finishes, you watch as everybody's mouth just drops. Um, it's at that point you watch as the announcer says, you, you need to get yourself up here now. And you watch as he starts to clap, pointing towards you, Micah. You've been selected. Uh, as, I, I tried. As, as I make my way up the stage, I'm going to turn to my Barris and just, just enough for him to hear me. Is, is, does this count as coming out of my shell? Is this, is, does this make you happy now? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Time that beautifully. <laughs> It's so, so much better. He goes up there. I'd like to give him a pat on the back uh, and give him guidance. Okay. So as you do so, you give him a pat. Uh, are you feeling proud or jealous of your friend here, Zendardus? Oh, 100% proud. All right. So you pat him on like, the shoulder. Oh, yeah. 100%. Like he is, he was able to do something fantastic and that is amazing for him. Also, sure. Surf Roth. This doesn't Good really way, feel man. like his, uh, his sort of thing. Are you sure he's going to be right up there with everyone looking at him? Oh, I've also got one point of exhaustion above table. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> embarrassing myself on his stage. Are you so what you're saying is that you're hung the fuck over right now. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> All right, so gents, just so you guys know as well, we have just been donated $5, which means inspiration oh, for a single player. So, hey, so froth. Malissimo. 
So, Froth, you need to tell us who gets that amazing uh, inspiration. I'd also like to thank Overcord and Do 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 Nuts 200 for the follows. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys are absolutely amazing. So, thank you for coming in and thank you for following the channel. All right. Man, I fucking love these names coming in, man. Keep oh, yeah. it rolling, guys. They're You're good. awesome. They're all good, yeah. All right. Thank so, you, Froth. Appreciate it, man. At that, you watch as you make your way up to the stage, Micah, and you can see you're standing next to a Kenku, a dwarf, and a human individual, and they all look young, and they're all sort of students here, and you watch as they're sort of crackling these pyrotechnic displays in front of them. You watch then as the announcer says, Okay, guests and fans, you might like to stand back and put in your earplugs because this pyrotechnics display is going to get loud and it's going to get flashy. If you're sensitive to natural hands. lights, you might need... To wear your goggles. Ah, uh, questions at the end, young sir. You had your chance to impress, but unfortunately your friends beat you out to it. So, enjoy I the show. I don't have any earbuds. There's a bread stand over there. Go and use some. And it's... <laughs> oh, I always couple of, uh, I carry a few on me. And he pulls out a pair of earbuds, but they're, like, gross. I visibly got wax on them. Mm, yeah. Here. You can use those. Oh, but what what are you? I'm already I'm basically deaf already. Uh, a lifetime of art, uh, artificing to uh, come to the table. You, you take them. I, I insist. Jack, I don't want to be rude, but those look absolutely disgusting. Oh. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. No, sorry. And he puts them. He sort of blushes a little bit as he puts them back in his uh in his pocket. Um, I do thank you see, though. When he pulled them out of his pocket, he probably pulled out like a little bit of lint with it as well. So there was like a bit of lint with these uh, with these two earbuds, and he puts them back in his pocket. He's like, so, "Oh, the, it's, it's all right. I'll, I guess I should probably think about heading back and, and cleaning myself up a little bit. I'm a bit, I'm a bit shabby." Are you gonna stay and celebrate for Micah? Oh you yeah, know he's no. going to win. I'll I'll watch it. This is probably not like I say. It's probably not really his sort his sort of thing though. He doesn't seem like really the, the entertainer. So. I, I get down into a squat to look at Frank directly in the eyes, and I say to him, "Don't underestimate Micah. I've seen what he can do." Oh, all right, all right. We'll uh, we'll see what happens. Is um is Micah within thirty feet of the stage? Yeah. Cool. Well, seeing as how he's standing on the stage. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I mean, is Barris within thirty feet of Micah? Yep. You guys are all within cool. thirty feet of each other. Uh, I'll, I'll expend a bardic inspiration on Mr. Micah as well, just so that he has a bit of extra pizzazz. All right. So you have guidance and just bardic in inspiration, Micah. Yeah. And you feel he's got heat. Yeah, you feel very supported by your friends. Okay, so as you get up I there... I like this feeling. <laughs> you watch as the announcer says, it is now time for individual competitors to show their arcane might. You will display your pyrotechnics in the best manner that you can, and the winner, as I said, will receive... And you watch as he brings out this wand, and he holds it in his hand and starts to levitate. He says, the wand of pyrotechnics, and you watch as he flashes it away. He says, you, sir, with the beak. And you watch as the Kenku looks towards him and goes, ah! He says, you will go first. And you watch as he begins to move his hands together. He spreads his feathers out wide, and you see this crackle of blue energy. Shoots them both up into the sky, and it's almost like a magic missile spell begins to weave and maneuver around, almost like an air-to-ground-seeking air missile. And you watch as they all combine in this explosion and flower of um, arcane light. Uh, he will get a plus one to this roll. I just, I, I can't see. Oh, come here, Frack. Get on my back, man. You see what I did oh. there? I ran. Did you hear it? Yeah, that, that was good. But Thank also you. kind of, kind of demeaning. Well, maybe, maybe was, just a box. I man, I didn't mean like that. Just get on my back. I can't do it. You hear this slow clap as the Kenku's display comes to an end. It's at that point you watch as the dwarf steps up and you watch as he twirls his mustache a little bit, uh, his black mustache, and you watch as he strokes his goatee all the way down. And you watch as he does so, he's producing this electricity 
And once the electricity sort of comes into his hands, you watch as he creates it into this ball and spider web and he snaps his hands closed and he produces this thunder wave and he watches it pushes everybody backwards. Your hair and your bodies begin to get flushed back as well and you hear this massive that goes straight through the entire crowd. Uh, This will be with a plus three to his roll. Okay, so this uh, a little bit m- more impressive than the Kenkus, but not so much. And you watch as the human mm. steps up. You can see brown freckles on their cheek, and you can see that they have um, red lipstick on, and you can see that he's got this sort of mop of hair that seems to be blonde and sort of pushed to one side and spiked up at the back. And you can see as he moves his hand upwards, he pulls his sleeve down, and once he pulls his sleeve down, you can hear this massive crackle of thunder. As he does so, you watch as this cloud begins to circle above his head, turning the clear day uh, into a a rainy one. And you watch then as he just shoots his hand up into the sky and then it starts to rain just in his current position. And you watch as that water begins to swirl around and then he moves his hands apart and the water just from that globule-like position just begins to... separate and spray and as it does so you can see varying different colors of the rainbow speckled through the teardrops as it falls down on everybody and you can see the the sort of kids moving around and trying to catch the raindrops as they do and some of it just turns into bubbles as it floats away as well uh so this guy has a plus three as well to his dice roll Uh, that was a bit much micah you will be going after this so you have to come up with a way (laughs) It does not land. Uh, before you, uh, before you go, you do have that inspo that uh, was given to you by Modbrew. Ooh. No, that was given to Prax. Uh, no, 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 no. Mod, Modbrew gave me one at the start. Oh. Um, yeah, I'll use it for this. You, guy. you also do still have one though, uh, Micah. A uh, natural twenty. You had one from last game. Come on. Oh. <laughs> oh. And that's payback, Josh. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, what do you mean it's payback? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Mike is just gone. He's like, nah, that's, that's enough. So that's initially, enough initially very underwhelming, this water-like spell. But as the drops seem to fall, every time it does so and it lands on somebody's hand, it's not just like a raindrop. It's like a small kiss of light that hits their skin. And as they do, they feel happy and warm. And they look up and they're like, ah. And you watch as the conductor says, what a pitiful display. Oh, my goodness, it's beautiful. You're going to have a hard time being that one, old man. But it's your turn. What can we call you, son? He's looking at you, Micah. Micah. Most people just call me Micah. Micah, sure. what do you have for us? A very impressive display to gain qualifying. Please, wow us. We've saved the best to last, people. <clears throat> All right. So I need to, do I need to roll a 23 or high, like a 24 or higher? He got a crit, so you will need to probably roll substantially higher than a, than than usual but skill check wise he did get a 23 so i'll say if you got if you get more than a 23 i'll say that you succeed you got the bardic inspiration right i've got bardic inspiration i've got guidance i'm I'm also rolling with disadvantage no you got inspo oh so i'm rolling flat yeah you're rolling flat because you have um disadvantage due to exhaustion from the night before we're gonna do what micah does uh is special Fizz, can you just can, what what we're gonna do? We're gonna we're, we're gonna make me glow green, and then we're ju- we're just gonna roll with it, all right? That I can do. Making you glow green is like my favorite thing. And you watch as uh, this green spectral ghost, this portly gentleman with a bulbous nose and a horseshoe ring of hair, this this vest of leather sort of begins to emanate from the tankard. Uh, and it appears that only you can see him at the moment, Micah. And he looks to you in this soft way. Um, and as you look at him now, having seen the photograph and knowing his his method of death, you look at his horseshoe baldness, and it doesn't look like baldness anymore. You kind of take the first close look at him, and the, the circle on his head seems to be almost a scar or a wound, not a uh, patent baldness as you see him, and it's perfectly circle, which clocks with you. But he looks to you with a soft grin. Righty, I... What... Is this, this is a performance check, isn't it? 
well, you can flavor it however you like. You threw the spear last time and I made it an attack roll. So if you can tell me right. how you want to impress the judge using uh, Fizz, I'll I'll assign a check to you, or you can tell me what check you'd like to perform. Oh, I, I'm just I, I I'm I'm going to attempt to persuade him that I'm better. <laughs> But from there, you can do whatever you'd like. Okay. Um, because I guess I was going to burn my oath of oath of oath my oath today and burn that on um, emissary of peace. So I get a plus five to charisma situation okay. checks. Yep. Um, we and then I am going to. Faye touched. I'm He's that my misty step up into the air and then slam into the ground, like full boy, 30 feet in the air, slam into the ground, and then I'm burn another spell, another steering smite as I hit the ground impact. Okay. So there's like a shock wave of uh, green. Yeah, All right. So I'll I get see you... what you're doing here, by the way, DM. Uh, <laughs> I'll get you to roll your persuasion check. Oh, we're rolling flat. So that is plus, that's 16. And you also have your inspiration, your bardic inspiration die. D6, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. D6, yeah. And, and you had D6. guidance from Praxilius? No, not from me, from um, Zen. Zen, right. Hmm. I'm just used to you jabbing people. <laughs> not this time, I was too late. Oh, that's a horrible roll. That is a 21. Okay. Oh. So, I read the wrong thing. Sorry. Let's do that up. It is better, but he needed a 23. It's not enough. I need a 23. Oh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> All right. So you this want... is what happens. This is what it looks like. Micah, you watch as <clears throat> you stand, arms outstretched, and your elbows are locked into your sides. And as you do, you watch as Fizz surrounds you, and you hear a voice in your ear that says, I'm going to lift you up now. I'm going to make you shine. And you watch as he does so. He lifts you up and you start to glow green. And everybody's just like, oh. You raise 30 feet above and you watch as everybody's looking at you. You shine like the sun, this explosion of green light. And you watch as you immediately duck down, Peter Pan dive and slam into the stage with a searing smite as it does so. You watch as there's this massive crater into the stage. There's this green flames that sort of licks around and everybody's just silent for a second. They, you hear this voice from the back. One of the gnomes says, I think he's dead. And that the smoke begins to clear. And Micah, you stand up to an applause. Very, very good display. You watch then as the announcer says, Ah, it was a great display of prowess athletically and pyrotechnically, but the magic displayed by our human friend. He's going to win the day. The pyrotechnics wants belongs to him. And you watch as he sends it that way, and you watch as this individual takes the the um the wand. And you watch as he shoots it up into the sky. And as he does so, you can see this orange just bursts of fireworks. Psst, 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 psst. Uh, and then so that, you watch as everybody starts to go up to the congratulate the contestants. And Micah, the crowd seems to gather around all the other contestants and you're there standing in your crater. You watch as the announcer moves towards you and says, not a bad one, son, but uh, you're going to have to do better next time. And you watch as his voice completely changed, almost as if like a showmanship has, had dropped and he moves directly past you and uh, across to the winner. His voice goes back to his performing one and he says, well, 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 we have our winner. Move out the way because I need to get a photo with this man. And you watch as he does so and leaves you there, sullen, a loser. I, I just, I guess, I guess, yeah, look, self filling prophecy there, isn't it? Um, make my way back to the group. Um, oh, my God. And as I pass Varus, I turn to him and I say, look, there's, see, I told you there's no point in trying. Hey, look, man, don't look to me like that and make out like you just <laughs> fucking want to oh, be a loser all your life. At least you got up and did something this time. No, look, and you put yourself out there and you and st still come off second best. So, like, I'm just... What? At least I you tried came second. Follow, I tried to follow you. Why don't yeah, you... Seconds, no, seconds no, first no. Loser, seconds first loser. I don't want to hear the negativity, man. You went up, you contributed, and you came second. Stop bashing yourself about it. You did good. You Thanks, hear yeah. this voice inside your head from Fizz, and it says, And you know what, Micah? At the very least, at least you beat Zen to getting up onto the stage, and there's something worth in that. Yeah, yeah, I, I beat my friend at something he's probably a lot better at. Let's go, yeah. I'll head over to uh, Micah <laughs> and I'll pat him on the shoulder and I say, 
That was an excellent work there, Micah. Above hey. the table. Sorry, oh. Zen. You go. Okay, you go. Above the table, Barris knows Celestial. Can he hear? Can we all hear? What's her name? Um, Fizz. Most of the yeah. time, he speaks so you all can hear. Okay, so if I understand, oh. he's Celestial, correct? Mm-hmm. So if, if I, I understand Celestial, I hear him yep. saying that. Yep. Cool. I just wanted to know that for RP, that's all. So yep. All good. Guns in. In a note, I, like, I just put my hand on your shoulder and I said, yeah, you did You did very well. Um, it's at that Thanks. point you guys have this tender moment, a hand on his shoulder, and as you do, you hear this crashing... Uh, and you look ahead of you, and you can see what looks like a rolling ball of mess of mechanics and also uh, frozen ice and rock. You can see this ball just begins to roll straight across a tent, and somebody just dives out of the way just in time. You watch as the people around you just sort of look, and you hear the announcer say, Everybody clear the way! It's a rolling ball of machines and ice! And you watch as he sort of runs in the opposite direction, and everybody's like, Ah! Uh, I mean, that's a the dilemma. I was wondering when that was going to show up today. As you say that, you watch then as this mech begins to sort of stand up, this massive fist hits the ground and it stands directly tall and you hear this booming voice that says, You must desist. You are messing the campus. Cleaner will clean. You will die. And you watch as he rushes forward and you can see this mech just begin to punch down onto this ice elemental, the same elemental that you guys had seen be escaped by uh, Kaysen the night before you watch as this elemental just sort of gets up and this ice begins to emanate from its hand and you watch as it just starts to charge towards it and you watch as it spins around and starts to freeze everything around it it's at that point you watch as everybody begins to run uh what would you like to do are you telling me is this a mech versus kaiju fight oh Yes. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> In the marketplace. <laughs> you watch as everybody begins to run around as Zen's jaw drops as he's watched many a movie of this in his youth. Um, um, I'm just going to get you guys to roll initiative. Cool. I was going to say, um, Praxilius, if he sees this happening, the first thing he's going to do is he's going to pull off his backpack, which he was carrying or lugging around uh, earlier. Would you allow him to, to don that? Yes, I will. Would you would Before? you also allow Varus to get his shield up with a bonus action? No. Damn it. Yes, I will. That's fine. <laughs> a good try. Oh. <laughs> no, you can. You can, man. That's Three. fine. Would you allow me to cast Fireball without expressing the spell slot? You go. Fuck you, fuck you all. <laughs> would you allow me to re-roll my nat one on initiative? Well, no. I, I we would like that. to. No. I'd like to make my case. Praxilius has uh, has a little bit of trauma left over from what happened before. That's why he was carrying this backpack around with him all day in the first place. So I feel like as soon as he sees anything that could potentially be trouble, he was pulling that backpack off and he was setting this thing up. So um, I feel that's fair. Yeah, you guys, I give you a fucking inch and you take a mile. So <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I hate you, well, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't give us an inch then, Aaron. You should oh, have that. I, man, don't you worry. I'm, I'm quite happy for you to say, no, I want you to do that uh, yeah, on your yeah, first round. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy. If you want to retroactively say that, that's, I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm no, just, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm more than no, happy you for you. No. I'm more than happy for you. <laughs> I'm happy for me too. Because my kid's finally asleep, I think. Yay. I think. He All right, could be so destroying something. I'm setting up this map, and whilst we do so, um, Micah, or Michael, you can tell everybody about our Discord giveaway. Off you go. Ooh. A Discord giveaway. A Discord giveaway is happening in Discord, obviously, which is going to appear in chat in three, two, one. Yeah, did it. Nailed yeah. that timing. <laughs> All right, Discord giveaway. Um, we are giving away a set of dice. Oh, is that the, are we talking about the Hero Forge? Yes, Hero Forge is the Discord yeah. one. Yeah. So if you join that Discord link in, oh, I don't know how my camera works. This one in the chat there. There is a channel where Miniatures Gallery, if you go in there and post the miniature that you have made on Hero Forge, um, we will be judging 
which one I guess which one stands out to me the most um I can be bribed on discord so like if you just send me like and I'm happy to post my paypal here oh. um just I think dm's still muted so he can't hear us <laughs> um, but if you jump in there and post a, a hero forge miniature that you've made um and the winner gets a $25 voucher so with that $25 voucher you are free to do with whatever you want um if you want to buy the uh the file and send it to I don't know, someone local or a small business that could potentially print it. I don't know. Is that, I don't know if anyone knows anyone. It depends if you are local. But if you are, look at G-coded customs, and that's oh, coded sorry. with a 3D. I'll plug it all night if you want. I've that. heard that Valiant Odyssey uses those uh, miniatures, and they're really good. They do. They're especially good for your uh, tabletop RPG campaigns. And uh, if you ever need any, I'm happy to post as well. But you'll only know it's good if you win the competition, and you can only win the competition if you join the Discord and post. And uh, And what what kind of things are they going to be uh, judged on? Look, the more out there, the more the more odd. We're going with odd, like different, something, something that you know, like isn't your traditional like rogue with a with a hopper hood, like something different. I think someone has posted a really, really good Steve Irwin in there. Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. um, really good. Which right. is, that's that's pretty good with the dragons and everything he's got going on. Um, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. So, guys, yeah, check that out. Yep. Um, the make sure the you're, you're jumping on the Discord. The the better. The more obscure. Obscure is probably a better word. And, uh, like obscure yeah. races, good classes. Let's make it obscure as heck. That's what I want to see. I want to, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I don't want to see just your average run of the mill paladin with a long sword. I want to see something, something I haven't seen before, something crazy. So, yeah, make sure you jump on uh, heroforge.com. Um, cook something up, whack a, uh, whack a picture in the Discord, and uh, you go in the win to, you go in the draw to win a $25 voucher, which is uh, pretty good, pretty amazing. Uh, that, that will actually net you more than one miniature, by the way, guys. So, on plastic it will i think yeah yeah um but my paypal can... is also paypal.com forward slash don't tell dm if you want to paypal me with whatever you want and just let me know what your username and discord is he's got such a good poker face yeah i know i he's know poker face. i'm not gonna play poker face i'm not gonna play yeah. poker with him at all Boy, boys on. it must be a pretty exceptional map right now if he's taking this long to get a go on yeah i think he's on I'm incarnate and making the map. yeah i think he forgot to do it so he's just making <laughs> he's it like, right now Shit. i need parts <laughs> i need weird frozen giants and i need something else all right there you go nerds <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks boss. Hey. Oh, you made that in like that amount of time. You're so good. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good, good. Aaron. What a great awesome. thing, Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. But you know the best I didn't part about this. Was not on. You what know the best, the best part, part about this? The best part about this, it. no, is that uh, Avocado Soul One gave me advantage. So thank you Ooh. so much. I appreciate it. I'm going to use well, it to that. silence these no one, assholes. No one. I wasn't going to mention it. Tell Avocado Soul to go away. Um, well, they also to say, to say so so awesome. is actually um, he's going to be rolling with disadvantage in the uh, in the giveaway to Discord. So. <laughs> I do <laughs> see though that someone gave uh, uh, one of our players uh, advantage as well. Yeah, uh, I believe a uh, Bakes two one two two gave Prexilius advantage. What a top and one! I believe uh, that there was a Herlock gave Micah uh, for his performance on stage. <laughs> 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 Equally top bloke. All right, roll your initiatives, guys. Thank you. Advantage now. Uh, Would you like a Uh, thirteen? Not one for Michael. What did I roll? Ten as per chat. Uh, A twelve for Praxelius, which is uh, not too bad. yeah, as these as these things start rolling up and and doing their thing, you see Praxilius as he uh, he unshoulders this backpack, sets it down on the floor in front of him. He unlatches the helmet, which has been dangling on the side of it. He puts that on his head. He grabs two handles, which are on top of the backpack, turns them, pulls them up. There's like a as he pulls it up, and it's sort of like this pseudo armor unfolds as he pulls it up. He steps into it like he's stepping into some kind of. Uh, 
expensive suit or something like that. And as he steps into it, it just chink, 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 like sections just slide around his body. All right. And as you do that, you watch as this ice elemental begins to charge up its icicle hands and you watch as it starts to see you guys. It sees you start to armor up Praxilius uh, and you watch as it then charges through. Uh, You watch as it runs directly through and past this iron-like structure known across the campus as Cleaner. And as it does so, you watch as it goes to make three attacks, but it does so with its freezing strikes. Um, The first attack is going to go towards the um, the golem. With a plus seven, uh, that will hit. So with damage, it will be... And that. It's just going to be insane. So 11 points of damage. Oof. All right. Okay. Okay. Fair. Uh, for the first attack. And the next attack is going to go towards Micah. And the next attack is going to go towards Prak. So the first attack towards Micah is an 18. Does that hit you? Yes. <laughs> I guess. Varus is going to use his reaction to cast Silvery Barb. Okay. Ooh. So he um, rolls with disadvantage. He needs to roll again. Yep. Um, just a heads up, while I'm conscious, everyone within 10 feet of me gained plus two tool saving throws as well. Ooh. Okay. Uh, so that is a 14 oh, to hit. That misses. Okay, well, and I I'll... give advantage to Micah as well. All right. Well, I will then use the DM's advantage given by Avocado Soul to roll that again. <laughs> oh, this is a roller coaster! <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to thank this damage brought to you by Avocado Soul 1. Thank you. <laughs> if this is another crit, I'm out. I'm just like, my computer died. It's not a crit, but that's 10 <laughs> points of damage followed by. Uh, oh only two points of ice damage. So 10 bludgeoning to ice damage as you get hit by this whirlwind fist that seems to knock you back into one of the sides. The next one goes towards you, Praxilius. Uh, that's going to be a 26 to hit you. Oh, uh, yeah. Just hits. Okay, so it is going to hit you uh, with six points of damage followed by... One point of cold damage, and Micah and Praxilius, your speed is reduced by 10 feet until the end of his next turn. Uh, that's him done. You watch as these two giant mechanical and ice-like beings begin to fight in the middle of the streets, and as they do so, you then watch as it becomes Zendardus' turn. The rest of the individuals start to fight through the crowds. Off you go. Yep. Uh, bonus action, a spotlight from the heavens just comes down and strikes Micah, uh, giving him ugh, only three HP back. Sorry, mate, I rolled like crap. Um, to the club. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, Zen will move five, ten to there, and then just peek around the corner and just start finger bump, uh, finger gunning him. Finger bumming? Uh, you gonna finger bump? <laughs> finger bump? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, this yeah, is yeah. Second, I'm a broken tonight. Thanks, man. Uh, first one's a natural twenty. Oh, Chris! Yeah! <laughs> well done. Second one is also a natural twenty. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought it was for a sec. I was like, nah, it's a 23. 23. Close. Close enough. Uh, uh, so the first one is ugh, uh, six, seven, eight, ten points of damage. Okay. Well, to three, but doubled. And the second one ugh, is eight. Eight points of damage. Okay. So as those Eldritch uh, Blasts hit. 
but I was hit earlier. I, I don't think I put the, the damage in correctly. What was it again? Sorry. I don't remember. I believe it was... <laughs> Uh, the first seven. one was six. It was I don't seven. remember the ice. Yeah, seven. seven. Oh. And your speed's reduced okay. by ten. Oh yeah. All right. Uh, so. Is that your turn, Zen? Uh, that is my turn. All right. You are up, Praxilius. All right. So I imagine this thing just slams Praxilius while he's still getting his armor ready, and Praxilius stumbles backwards and like lands in maybe a, a, like a crate of uh, fruit and vegetables or whatever it is that's lying next to him, scattering cucumbers and shit flying all over the place. My cabbages. And <laughs> you just see this pair of gauntleted hands sort of come out of like this pile of uh, cabbages and cucumbers and carrots and whatnot and just push them aside and he sort of stands back up and you can see him in this brand new set of uh, um, infused armor now instead of the um, scale mail armor that he had before it's now a suit of splint mail armor um, and the first thing he does, he sort of raises up his hand in front of him and he sort of taps the back of his gauntlet. Um, and this segmented plate that's sitting on his forearm starts to expand around in like a spiral circle and forms a shield. And then um, you see him as he quickly pulls out like a little, what appears to be like a small canister slips it into a slot in the back of the shield, and um, then he is going to cast a spell. A little spell I like to call um, Mirror Image on himself Beautiful. as an action. Uh, Praxilius, you've just been given a natural 20 by Raid Vader. Ooh, thank you, Raid Vader. Man, I'm getting spoiled tonight. I've got two advantages and a natural 20. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I am, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait to use that one because now's not the right time. Uh, mm -hmm. So that's his, uh, that's his action. I'm going to say that that's going to be his, uh, his movement and bonus action as well. So end Zen of his turn. All right, Zendata, so you see Praxilius cast a spell that you had been desperately trying to learn just hours before in your class with your twin caster professors, and you are amazed at his, uh, his ability. Uh, Varys, you are up, followed by the mech after that. How big is this mech? Ah, uh, sorry, the, um, the frost elemental. Uh, they're both as big as each other, so they're about 15 feet tall, and they're just duking mm. it out. Think yeah, like so they, real yeah, steel. They tower over us then. Yeah, 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 cool. yeah. They're sort of level um, with the building heights. Yeah. It, it, from what Varus can see, is the frost elemental, is he just like on a rampage? Because yes. he has, obviously has no, he doesn't know anything that happened. He knows it was freed, obviously, but he, he didn't see what the uh, end result was. So is it just like just rampaging basically? Uh, roll, I'll say roll a... Um... I think he wants to see if it's... it's, it's um... Sentient? More so, is it going to... If they don't put it down, is it going to keep Rick and have it around campus? Because he's, you know, front of his mind is obviously the safety of a lot of the other people on campus, including his three friends right here. So okay. I'll get you to roll an intelligence check. Uh, with yeah. your intelligence check, I'll say that you're scanning your memory banks for the studies you've done on elementals before. Cool. Like saving throw intelligence? Is that what you're saying? No, just a regular yeah. regular intelligence check. Uh, I didn't even know if intelligence was an actual thing. You just press the modifier. Dill D the Dane, thank you so much for the follow and welcome on in. We are happy that you found yeah, us. Yeah, I did. Saving throw intelligence. No, it's not save. Is it's just meant? just click on the modifier. Where's the modifier? So up oh, in the top oh, bar yeah. instead of oh, yeah, it's the same it's just result anyway, those. bro. It's a plus one. Sorry, gotcha. Okay. Twelve. So uh, with a twelve, I will say that you know that elementals can be quite volatile if not controlled. Uh, this one mm -hmm. doesn't seem to have any tether on it at all, and the reason they're so uncontrollable is because this is not their regular plane of existence they act wow. on pure uh signatures of ether basically they act on the whims of whatever the ether wants them to do at the time yeah. and um it's probably has no regard <clears throat> for the fact that there are buildings around it if it wants to go to the left through that building it will do so 
Um, right. And, and you yeah. also know, all of you know, that Cleaner, the actual mech robot, he is beloved by a lot of different people on the campus to the point where, like, he keeps the whole place clean. He collects the trinkets for Rixie. Uh, he yeah. manages the lost and found. He's like this big, dumb robot that everybody just sort of fawns over and loves. And he's just, like, yeah. smashing the shit out of this thing because it's icing up his joint. And he's just like, you're making a mess and I need to clean it up. Cool. Easy. So he establishes that. Yeah, the, um, he needs to put this ice being down. So he's going to use a bonus action before he leaves uh, Micah and go, uh, hey, buddy, uh, I think you could use this more than me. And he will uh, exude a bardic inspiration and imbue Micah with a, uh, a, a flame of uh, or an aura of magenta white that uh, goes around him. So he has a D6 to whatever he chooses. Um, and he will use his movement. He's not within range, or he is of old mate. Micah is in range at the moment. No, I'm me. Uh, yeah, you're within 15 feet of the mecha. So if I move, I'll get attacked. Is that correct? Uh, yes, you will. Um, if its focus is drawn on you and it chooses to use your, its reaction on you. Oh, I feel like it's looking at Prak, who, whose last attack it was. So he's going to take this as a bit of a distraction and run the gauntlet and try and get away. So he'll move one, five, ten, and he wants to maintain sight. So he's going to go in between these two. No, just to the back here behind Zen. Find the carts. Yep, it does not appear to attack you with an attack of opportunity. It seems to be preoccupied right. holding up its guard with the mech and the two other combatants at its side. Cool. So we've expended a bardic inspiration, we've taken movement, and he is going to take a note from our old Zen's book and he will use... Um, he will use... Actually, who's next in turn? Zen's out of turn, Mike is out of turn. I think your last, uh, second last Tim. Cool, some last. Uh, you he's guys... actually going to try vicious mockery. Um, wait, really? How are you going to insult it? Oh, I'm going to use. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Let's might we might go with um Tasha's hideous, hideous laughter. Who said anything? Player said funny falls into bits of laughter. Target must succeed a wisdom saving throw or fall prone. Let's give it a whirl. It's probably got pretty good wisdom though, but anyway, let's um let's give it a crank. Yep, uh, we'll go we'll go with uh Tasha's hideous laughter. Yep, pop that in the log for me so I know what save I've gotta do. I shall. As that sent the gang log, your wisdom sixteen save, mate. Fantastic. Okay, and it needs Preacher to be able to with an intelligent score has to have an intelligence score or less. So it will get a five. It is affected. Cool. Okay. So it will uh, fall prone uh, and become incapacitated and unable to stand up. Mm -hmm. um, and at the end of each of its turns, it may, or, or when it takes damage, it can make another wisdom saving throw. Um, so if they start to rain down on it, it can. Yep. Uh, and again, it's 16. So that obviously says so. The target has advantage on the saving throw if it's triggered by damage. So obviously if they hit him, he gets advantage roll, yeah? Yep. Um, cool. You look towards... Uh, he'll also take damage too, I believe. Oh, no, he won't. I mm, like. Yeah. It, you look towards cleaner and it looks like he is going to, or they are still going to rampage upon it. Um, oh, all good. Despite, yeah. Anyway. Yep. Um, it That's then becomes, turn. yep, cleaner's turn. Cleaner will basically run straight over the elemental, seeing that it's prone now, and you can hear it just sort of gurgling, and the ice seems to be cracking across its form as it's hit the ground in this area. People begin to run, and you can see some students starting to throw tomatoes at this elemental, and as they hit it, they kind of fry, freeze into icicles as well. You watch as Cleaner moves over it and says, You are making a mess, and he stamps directly onto his chest as one of his slam attacks and moves directly over to the other side of him. Uh, so one slam. You've also been to give it a that twenty whenever you want to use that DM. Oh baby, thank you, Avocado. So I 
appreciate it. That is a D12. Uh, no, that's a natural 20 crit. Thank you so much. <laughs> Flying banana, I swear to God. All right. So don't be mean to chat, guys. At that, the damage, I won't do the natural 20 now. I'm going to save that for players. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, you do, of course. Of course. Yeah, I, I would too, you know. So he means oh, to play wow. as DM. Yeah, oh my god. All right, <laughs> seven points of damage done to uh, the elemental, but you watch as it seems to freeze over some of the wounds as if it doesn't seem to be taking as much damage as you think from that particular source. Uh, then you watch as Cleaner sort of turns around at his waist and you watch as you hear this clicking, this tick, 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 and you watch as he just swirls around and his arms just start to windmill. And as he does so, everybody within 10 feet needs to make a dexterity saving throw. All right. Uh, dexterity saving throw. That's you too, Zen. Think, okay, don't cool. forget, boys. Everyone's plus two if they're within 10 feet. Everything's plus two. Great. Live forever. Um, so, um, yep, Zendardus, you don't get a plus two from Micah, but you do Praxilius. Yep. Uh, so for the plus two, it's a 15. I rolled two twos with disadvantage. Okay. So you will fail Micah. Uh, the rest of yeah. you will pass. So full damage to Micah, half to everybody else from this attack. All right, so from the whirl, you watch as uh, Cleaner just begins to swing around. It hits Micah directly into the back. As it does so, you take most of the damage because he wheels around towards you, hits you, and you are in between his fist and the elemental as he strikes him. Uh, you then watch as uh, the elemental also take uh, full damage because he uh, failed his save. Praxilius, you take half, and Zen, you take half. So 12 points of damage for each of you, 25 for Micah. That then ends his turn as Cleaner just sort of locks into the elemental now and you watch as he's ready to sort of pummel him with both fists. Micah, you are up. What would you like to do? I just want to point out that... Um, <laughs> did you see the chat poll that I did at the start of the session? Yeah. No, I did not. <laughs> you are out on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> um, Crowd so disperse, or are there, are there people still within danger? Or um, how no, there are, there are people that are still in the area, but they're far enough away for them not to be within the conflict. It seems that you four and Cleaner are the only ones in the area right now. Yeah, and with Tash's laughter before, does that the um, element Yeah, the Jimmy prime. wisdom save. He, yeah, thank you. Your, Yep. Thank you. Yep, he will uh, take the damage, and he will. Uh, he'll actually get. Does he get a save every time he gets damaged? He gets advantage if he gets damaged. Yeah. Okay. Well, he'll roll this twice. Mm -hmm. So with advantage, that is a natural twenty. <sighs> good. So he is no longer he prone. Is no longer prone. Yep. Uh, or incapacitated, but he is still he's still prone. Sorry, he's not incapacitated anymore because he needs to use his next turn as movement to get up. Sorry, correct. Yep. All right. So that then brings us to uh, top of the round. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm gonna hold my action until he goes to get it until the elder goes to stand up. All right. Sweet. Uh, okay. So it then brings us to his turn. He will now stand up using half his movement. So your action is and treated, is Micah. As soon as he does that, I'm going to cast Command and I'm going to say Grovel. Sweet. So what save is that? Intelligence or Charisma? That is uh, that is a Wisdom. All right, pop it in chat for me. Uh, th wisdom 13 he needs to pass. Oh, doesn't want to send. Sorry. That's, that's okay. All right, so that's a natural one, but I will use the chat's natural 20 to succeed. Oh my god, Avocado, you're killing me! Well done, guys. <laughs> my <brother>. It's interesting. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. sweat. Yeah, let's go, chat. Awesome job. All right, so now oh. it is going to take... Uh, it's going to see if it gets its recharge first. Uh, it does not. Come on. So it's going to take three attacks. Uh, it'll. It's going to go... It's wild, so it's going to go one on each of you. Uh, Praxilius, this is you first. That is a 15, which misses. The cleaner bot. Oh, um, 
One point of order, though. You did attack me, so you are going to have to roll a d20 to see if you hit a mirror image. All right, so I just because rolled... Because there's three Praxileuses. Yep. So I guess I've just rolled two d20s. One of them was a nine. The second one was a nine. All right, so one of them is... Uh, or you need to roll a six or higher to hit a, an image. So one of them is an image, I believe. Yep. If I'm reading that correctly, my mind's not working, so you shout in one of the images. All right, so there's two left, correct? Yep. Uh, yes, two images left. Yep. Uh, this... uh, in fairness, sorry, DM, um, as soon as Barris saw him attacking Prack, he would use Hellish Rebuke as a reaction um, on it, and I'll use that at the first level. It has to be attacking you for Hellish oh, Rebuke sorry, to work. Oh, sorry, you are correct. My bad. Yep. All good. Ignore that. <laughs> Uh, so this will be against Cleanerbot. Uh, Cleanerbot will be a 19, which will definitely hit. So damage on Cleanerbot is going to be uh, 10 points of damage. No ice damage this time. Uh, you do watch then, though, as uh, his metallic fists, or sorry, his ice shard fists hit his metallic form. Doesn't seem to do much damage at all. Uh, and then this one is going to go towards Micah. Uh, which will also miss with a nine. So that's its turn. It will pause there. Zendardus followed by Prack. You're up. Yeah. Uh, Zendardus mm. picks himself up off the ground and shakes his head after getting attacked by Cleaner. And I turn around and I look at him and I say, that was incredibly rude. We are trying to help. Uh, okay. I look over, um, scramble back up, and I look over. Um, Elemental. Correct? Yes. Inorganic? Uh, well, you can assume it's organic. Elementals oh. are living things. Sorry. I'm just trying to think here of what we can do to try and knock this thing down a bit more and I wanted to ask a few questions about it. Um, <laughs> I think you love spellcasters. I do. Um, multi-class <laughs> multi multi -class spellcasters are the best. Well, I've got I, a few questions I'm going to ask you too, so... I good. stand up and put my head up over the top of the uh, cart that I'm hiding behind. And I yell out to everyone, does anything, anyone have anything that's good against, like, elementals or constructs or anything of the sort? Something like a spell like Shatter or anything like that? Um, Praxilius hears the, uh, he hears him say Shatter, and he's still, uh, sort of ducking behind the shield. He quickly has a look down on his utility belt, and he's, like, checking through all the shit that he has on there, and he's like... Yeah, uh, uh, I might have something. Okay, above the table, you got Shatter? I do have Shatter, yes. Okay. Above the table, Barris has Shatter. Okay. All right. Above the table, Micah doesn't. Just, I just, <laughs> just to rule that out. I just saw all across it together. <laughs> okay, back under the table. <laughs> um, Thanks, Zen. That was my next move. Yeah, okay, cool, 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 cool. Glad we're on the same page. Um, then, if I'm remembering, I put my head back above the table. Shatter is con, right? Yep. Okay, put my head back down under the table. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I use my bonus action uh, as level one to cast Hex on the the uh, water elemental, and I target its constitution. Yes, you do realize that uh, that affects their ability checks, and there is no constitution-based yeah. ability checks. <sighs> oh, fucking, that's such I made the same spell. mistake last week. It's not we saved. I'm gonna need it. It's not yeah. saved. Yeah. Do you want to need to change that spell on next level up? You're up next, practice, so you know. This is an ice elemental, isn't it? Not a water one? Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's Fuck. Fun, 
No, oh, I was man. gonna try. I, I was gonna try uh, create or destroy water. <laughs> if it was a water elemental. Uh, okay, no, nah, that's fine. That's all good. Uh, Zen is going to run backwards even a little bit more now after being attacked by a cleaner bot, uh, which is rude, uh, to here. Wait, he's not going to have a line of sight. He's going to go here, sorry. Um, he's going to use uh, his bonus action to cast Healing Word on Micah at second level. What's the range on Healing Word? Healing Word is 60 feet. Okay, cool. All good. Seven HP back there, mate. Back, baby. <laughs> uh, then I'm going to expend uh, my uh, what's it called? Uh, my meta magic for twin spell. Uh, spending one sorcery point to be able to shoot four. Uh, Eldritch Blast. Sorry, yep. guys. My brain is fried. First one is 15. Uh, against the Elemental will be a miss. Okie doke. Second one is also a miss. Third yep. one is 16. Miss. Okay. DM out for blood, and I'm here for this. Wow. Yeah, uh, so all of those miss. All right. Cool. So... Zendardus goes and dives behind the rugs, heals Micah, and sends off four shots that completely miss its target. Uh, you see a secondary fireworks display occurring from behind there, although it's the wrong time for it. Uh, that then <laughs> brings us to Praxilius' turn. What would you like to do, mate? All right. Um, so, a couple of things. I'm going to take a, a, uh, take a page rather out of Grace's book, and I'm going to say, hear me out. I thought you were going to say, I'm going to take a poop. Poop. Yeah. I'm gonna take a poop. <laughs> poop everywhere. Uh -huh. Um no, that's a um oh, that's a crit and miss stream. Um so uh -huh. I have a little I have a little spell here and uh I, I wanna use it in a way that's not necessarily the way that uh, is rules as intended. But I think well, I'd like to think that you're more of a rule rule of cool kind of guy, right? I mean, I right? guess. Unless it really fucks me <laughs> over. <laughs> <laughs> and then the answer well, is I no. Mean, it, I feel like it, it'll just make this whole kaiju combat more spectacular because what we have here is we have a metal construct, right? Which is the cleaner bot. Yes. A heat metal. <laughs> and we have a, 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 an ice elemental with which it's doing uh, combat. If I um, were to, say, cast heat metal upon oh my God. the <laughs> um, metal construct... Could we add some some fire damage to its attacks uh, against the uh, ice elemental? No. Laser this. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you're no fun. You're you're I uninvited from think. Call of the Three. Like blazing hot metal. If it's wow. Attack should hit that. I, I feel it, like that okay. too. Wow, um, this guy. According to the rules as written, that is not the way that that spell works. However, I no, will allow is, you. To do uh, all that heat damage to your only ally in this fight, for sure. <sighs> well, I mean, if you're gonna be that way, um, let's uh, let's shatter this son of a bitch then. All right, Boom. let's do it. Uh, con save. Uh, you do make a con save, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, a creature made of uh, materials such as stone, crystal, or metal, and arguably uh, ice is a is a crystal, so. That will be a disadvantage. You would say arguably, wouldn't you? I would say it's no, not a crystal. Oh, come on. I would say <laughs> water crystallizes when it drops below zero degrees. And that yeah. is a scientific fact. Yeah, but a crystal is also a very hard uh, no, not necessarily. Not material. necessarily. A crystal can be quite brittle. It can be quite soft. Oh, it same as metal. It is brittle. All right, I'll roll with disadvantage because uh, it seems fair. Uh, what save am I doing? <laughs> Con save. All 
All right. I don't want my players to cry, so let's do it. <laughs> I made it anyway. I usually yeah. cry after the stream. There you oh, go, bad boy. Bitch. <laughs> All right. Well, no, I guess I have to you do take disadvantage anyway. Much damage. No, it's disadvantage. Oh. So I got a seven. So I, he fails. Oh, yeah. seven. All right. Well, uh, there we go. I'm going to give you... Uh, oh, well, I rolled low. So 10 points of, uh, of damage from that one. Okay. Um, that nice. damage. 3d8 thunder damage, um, and obviously I'm going to be trying to angle that in a way so that it's not going to hit any of our allies. So he pulls something free from his belt, twists a little key, pulls it out, and just rolls it underneath this creature. And same as uh, what it did for that uh, that concert on day one. Bong! And, uh, yeah, does, uh, does some thunder damage to this creature. I love it, Varys. It is your turn, my man. And oh. I'm going to move. Or you can move over there. Where you move to? Over, sorry, over there. Cleaner will take an attack of opportunity on you. Oh shit! Okay. Oh shit! Yeah, right. hostile, but okay, okay. He won't. I'm just joking. Oh, right. <laughs> I was like, fuck, that's right. <laughs> Are you trying to get me back? No. Negative. Oh. No way. Revenge isn't in my vocabulary, Sven. Well, it's in mine. <laughs> No, it is Varus's turn. What would you like to do, mate? Varus will move to here behind the cart, mm -hmm. opening up his line of sight to said creature. Uh, he will use Hexblade's Curse. Yep. Once per short rest as a bonus action. Uh, choose the creature within 30 feet. I believe he is just in range. He sure is. Uh, which may... Blah, 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 blah. I gain a plus three bonus to damage rolls uh, and I score a crit on 19 or 20 and I regain seven points if it dies, that is burnt. Um, <clears throat> and I will cast uh, two Eldritch Blasts as said creature. Go for it, roll your but attacks. This roll is a, a 26. 26 will hit. Second roll is a 28. That will that's hit. That's a nat 20. And that's a nat 20 too, sorry, on the second. Beautiful. Yep. Cool. See, chat, I don't even need your nat 20s, dog. And, do. um, <laughs> uh, Mo, can you please uh, mute uh, Bakes? Thank you. <laughs> I'll have his ones. Um, so that first one will be two, 2d10 plus 5. Did that go up? Oh, it did too. That's awesome. Or is that the crit that it just did? No. Oh, it did the crit damage first, sorry. So crit damage was 12 for the second. Yep. And is that plus three as well for the um, hex? It doesn't so add it. You'll have damage. to do it yourself, yep. Yeah, so 15 damage for mm -hmm. that. Done. So for the crit and for the non-crit, that will be... Seven plus three, so ten. So that's twenty-five points total damage to the ice elemental. Yep, is good damage. Uh, it's good damage. It is good damage. So and bad. that is a bit of movement done. That's his action done. His bonus action done. He is done, and he will. He is going to duck behind the uh, the cart. He is currently behind. All right, so Zendardus and Varus, you guys are blasting from afar, doing quite a significant amount of damage. Cleaner Bot then begins to stand up. Uh, he will move directly across, uh, lining him up like uh, Adam in Real Steel. You watch as he gets his sort of boxing gloves ready. Yes, great movie. Yeah, we need number two, Hugh Jackman, if you see this. Oh, absolutely, please. We are overdue. That's my happy PR. So um, uh, Hugh Jackman's definitely watching this. So you, you heard him, buddy. Get on it. Oh, yeah. Get on he it. Is. I'm seeing uh, if he reaches. out. I read in his Instagram today he was going to watch Hugh Jackman that. and Keanu Reeves definitely sit down every Thursday to watch Valley All Odyssey. The time. They love it. They do. I don't know what you're talking about. All right. He's going to slam him. I'm going to fucking tag him later on. Uh, that's against the water elemental. This one here is against Micah. Natural one. 
So you watch as uh, Cleaner Bot just goes for the uh, Haymaker over the top and you watch as the Ice Elemental ducks out of the way. He goes to slam and uh, hit Micah in, in his fashion but ends up missing as well. Micah, it is your turn. You are stuck between these two massive 15-foot tall bots that seem to be just like... <laughs> smashing each other. What would you like to do? If I move, him, I would take an opportunity attack, wouldn't I? Uh, Unless you disengage. Probably not from Cleaner. Maybe from the Ice Elemental. The When when Cleaner hits you, it seems to be just like you're in, in the way of what he's I trying mean, to yeah, do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, I need, I need my action to uh, get freaky with myself. Uh-huh. Did we say, say it like that? <laughs> <laughs> That's the weirdest thing you've heard. <laughs> get I, I'm just I'm just gonna cop it. I think I can outheal it. I no, you're not. Going... You won't cop it. Oh, uh, can still use a reaction for that. So let's use still breathe barbs again, shall we? Oh, okay, only, okay. Only if it takes a hit, yeah. Um, I am yeah. going to use my movement to move away or oh, thirty feet back. Remember, your movement is reduced by ten. Oh, that. Yep. So that is 20 feet. Oh, no. What have I done? We're moving back to there. What have I done? You begin to make what your way... What have I done, Gofna? <laughs> you make your way past some of the stalls and end up stopping. You can feel yourself fatigued as the ice seems to be taking the air out of your lungs as, uh, quicker than normal. So it didn't take a reaction attack it against Monica? Oh, it will. Hey, are we rolling that now? Um, yeah, let's do that now. Oh, that will be a disadvantage. Oh, I because I was just gonna let's see if he hits first. Yeah, base my healing or next movement. Oh, I thought I had to cast it if as soon as it takes it. I, I imagine like you... it, there's no point in using it unless it actually, you know, you know, right. it hits. My bad. You can then choose. Well, it does hit with a twenty-one, so I assume you used it. So I rolled a nine. Mark this I spell definitely slot. did use it. Yep, mark that yep. spell slot off. And adv- I did. And uh, advantage on to, I can give it to anyone. So I'm going to give it to Pra, actually. Ooh, what am I getting? You get advantage. Oh, I, I, I turned these. the frost creature's disadvantage into your advantage. Awesome. So All right, then I guess with my action right. then. Thank you very much. And- uh... I'm going to launch. Uh, I'm going to launch two javelins and they attacks. Go for it. Uh, uh, are you going for the elemental or cleaner bot? Oh, elemental, elemental. Sorry. All right. Well, cleaner bot will have a. Uh, well, sorry, elemental will have a bump to AC because it's directly behind a massive metal structure. You better use some of that movement, son. He can't. He's used it all. all. He used it all. You rookie. You better yeah. love that javelin, boy. You better love it. I'm love I'm gonna power. hold my action until the, <laughs> the until the elemental moves out and into a clinch then. Okay, cool. Uh it is the elemental's turn. Um I'm gonna roll a D twenty. Oh literally oh, random. Okay, it uh both of these shots are go all three of these shots are going to prack. Cool. Come on. Take it. Uh, it does not recharge its icy blasts. The first is going to be a 19 to hit, which I believe yes. misses with your shield. Uh, the mm-hmm. next is going to be lower than that, and the next is going to be lower than that. So three misses against you as this thing begins to start uh, wildly rampaging around. Uh, Why is it lucky, boy? That then brings us to Zen's turn. Would you like to see if they hit the um, two images that are remaining? or? Yes, I will. All right, so roll another 2d20 and uh, get an eight, uh, eight or higher on the first one. Nope. So misses the image. Uh, misses the image and then, and then another one, hit, one, I one, hit, one hit on the image. All right, so we've got one image left. Yep. Okay. Two praxilii. All right. I expend my second sorcery point 
to cast healing word twice, mm-hmm. uh, both on the uh, both on Praxilius. Uh, isn't healing word a bonus action? It is. Yes. You can't use two bonus actions. What do you mean? Expending a sorcery points a bonus action. Is it? It doesn't say that in. Hold on. I'm just having a quick read. Let me post that up into the thing because it doesn't say that anywhere. Pretty sure in your features, as I thought it should tell you that it is a bonus action to do that. Uh, you can use it to create a spell slot as a bonus action. By using like this a... Is a... <laughs> This is just for twinned spell. That one there. They're both in the uh, chat log. <clears throat> if I can't, I can't. It's not a stress. Ah, uh, you can use it's it. Just it's all good. Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah, you can. I just Perfection. All good. Yep, My yep, mistake. Yep. My bad. No, all good, all good. I'll take a natural 20 for it. <laughs> uh, it's oh at first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's uh, that's justice, that is. Okay. <laughs> it's at uh, first level. Um, so that will be 2d4. Oh, fuck. Uh, first one's five, second one is eight. So, a total of 13 HP back there for you, Prak. 13 points of damage healed. And it's looking pretty good. Oh, crap. Okay, I'm going to spend my last sorcery point to shoot four times with Children's Blast. Nope. Uh, 23. Um, you do have line of sight, so that will hit. Perfection. 21. Uh, that will hit. And natural 20. Oh, 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 oh. So two hits and a, and a crit. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Go for it, Roy. Oh, damage. Two hits and a crit. So this is for the crit. This is wild. 15 points of damage for the crit. This is yucky. Yucky. Pape, pape. 11 Another ice elemental is. And 13 <laughs> for the second. Oh, so 39. Of, yeah, 39. All right. Ooh. So 39 oh, points of force damage hits this creature directly into the chest. Just this... You watch as it stumbles a little bit, crushes down on one of the stalls and uses its momentum to get itself back up. That stall is now splintered. Uh, Praxilius, Ooh. it is looking rough. Sorry, cleaner bot. You watch then as the uh, the shards of ice start to begin to crystallize. Yeah, crystal. Crystallize around Ooh, it. Oh, I like that. And you can see that there are shards just sort of pointing out, making it look even more spiky as it's been blasted and damaged so much. Uh, it does seem to be repairing itself, but at a very slow rate. You're up. All righty then. It is repairing itself, but at a slow rate. And it seems pretty intent on the cleaner bot. Cleaner bot look, doesn't look too bad at this point. I think Praxilius is going to uh, err on the side of caution. And he is going to provoke an attack of opportunity and take a step back. Okay. To over there. He will definitely take it. Does he get it because he already used it against Micron? He just had his turn. Uh, uh that's twenty-two. Uh, roll another d20. See if it's an eleven or higher. Yep. Sorry, I rolled the wrong damage dice. Anyway, it's a ten. So I think that hits. Ten. A... Uh, that hits. Uh, it me, hits you, doesn't it? It hits me. Yes, that's a, that's a hit on me. Um, so roll some roll some damage. You take points. ten ten points of damage. Ten points of damage. Um, mm, mm, mm. I I have a question, and um, I'm 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 happy to, to to roll to see whether he would know this or not. If this creature were to by any chance 
um, totally unrelated to uh, Praxilius being hit, um, be pushed back by, uh, let's say, 15 feet. Uh, what would be the effect of that happening? Uh, would it slam into the cleaner bot? Would it uh, go flying to um, the right or left? It take depends. some damage? Or? It depends where you cast it. If it slammed into the cleaner bot, its momentum would stop, but I'd get it to take some damage. If right. it slammed into anything on the side, it would probably smash through them and stop at the larger structure that it couldn't break through, like the 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 actual structures, not the um, not the stalls. But it probably right, wouldn't so... take damage. It would take damage if it slammed into cleaner bot though, because he's a massive iron wall basically, and he's aggressive towards it. I like it. So uh, as Praxilius goes to take a step back, you see this thing whirl around and just bring its fist down on Praxilius. He still has his shield up. You see that little um, charge which he slipped into his shield when he activated his shield at the beginning of combat. It just suddenly explodes outwards uh, from the front of the shield from these tiny little pinhole um, holes in the front of the shield that you can barely even see in like this wall of force which blasts this thing back by 15 feet as a reaction. Wow. Okay. So it doesn't need to save or anything? Um, I will quickly read it again just to be sure. But just I post think, it in the um, log. Post it in the log. I'm not sure if I can put that in the log. Uh, no, because it's an infusion, but I can read it to you if you want. Uh, yeah, go for it. Uh, the shield has four charges. While holding it, the wielder can re use a reaction immediately after being hit by a melee attack to expend one of the shield's charges and push the attacker up to 15 feet away. Yep, so it just happens. It just happens. It doesn't uh -huh. say there's a save or anything yep. like that. So so I will say uh, he does slam into cleaner bot and he will take a d6 of damage as if he was falling that amount of feet. So d6 of bludgeoning damage to him, six... Uh, reduced to three for reasons all right uh <laughs> i like that reasons um he's gonna take a step back yep. um actually he's five ten he can probably move to there um when he reaches there he is going to pull back on that um bolt action um slot that he has on his gauntlet and a little uh pure white crystal sort of pops out the back of his fist he points it up towards the thing, and you hear, and this bolt of um, electricity shoots from this little crystal and arcs towards the uh, ice elemental. Um, and you know what? Let's use that natural 20 on there. I did go natural 20. Yeah, yes. Mod gave you one. All right. Um, so oh, no, it was Raid Vader, sorry. He gave you one. Or they, I don't um, know. That's going to be a hit, and it's not going to be too much damage, but it was worth it's worth it. Um, so let's have a look. Um, only 13 points of lightning damage. Yes, 13 points of lightning damage. And I'm sure electricity and water, they mix quite well, don't they? This is ice. It's ice. Ice, 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 water, same thing. Uh, is it though? Because like three rounds ago it was crystal and now it's water. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But the I chemical believe. composition oh, remains okay. the oh. same. Thus, it induces electricity at the same rate. Oh, you hear so, that? That's it induces it. Oh, uh, it induces it. Yes. Google.com does ice induce electricity. <laughs> now we got to check and see if it uses induce. Varus, you're up. Yeah, I was about to say, look, we aren't fucking dealing with pregnancy, boys. So I can just slow down. Um, Paris is, is going to. Uh, what are we up? What are we up? What are we up? So, so, correct me if I'm wrong, but. You're wrong. <laughs> Hexblade Curse is different to Hex, yeah, isn't it? It gives me a damage boost, whereas Hex gives me. An extra D6 of damage, yeah? Yep. Cool. Oh. Done. Passing that. Hexing. So, bonus action for Hex. Um, and he will, again, uh, charge, stand behind the cart, stand up behind the cart, charge both hands, Zen looks to Varus. He's, he's getting that whole, uh, what do you call it, Zell 
white magenta glow. Uh, hands flickering out with his Eldritch Blast, and he is going to just like throw both at the same time on this one. So his first attack will be a... That's a 21. That's going to hit. Uh, second attack will be a second beam. That's only a 13. So just one hit there. Yep, one hit. Roll your damage. Nah, that's going to be... Oh, that's shocking. Six plus three. Plus your D6. Uh, and he gets an extra D6. Nine plus four. So only 13 points of damage this time. How do you kill it? Oh! Hey. Uh, you, <laughs> then look the Varus, the, uh, the, the second ball he's sort of got in his left hand seems to fizzle slightly, and as he throws that, he sees that zoom over and hit the ground in front of the uh, the ice one, and then the right one flickers just hugely bright and just beams straight towards it, doesn't even, like, loop, just straight beam, hits it directly in the middle, uh, and you see this blast sit there, at the chest of it and melt into the being and then just boom, explode and shard. Beautiful. Gain Everywhere. inspiration for a Boy, great you. description of uh, slaying this beast. Okay, so you watch then as this creature falls down into its icy particles, you watch as whatever it was wielding just seems to drop and you can see that the ice just sort of shatters across the floor like a snowball hitting a hard surface. You then watch to see Cleanerbot immediately look around. It stops getting in boxes pose and starts getting its posture straight up and you watch as his arm changes from a massive fist to a dustpan and brush and it starts cleaning up the snow. You watch then as it moves along and you can see it start to straighten up some of the stalls and as it does so, you watch as the people begin to come back and they all sort of start to praise Cleanerbot. They're all just like, Cleanerbot, yay, Cleanerbot. Uh, and you guys begin to gather around as well. Uh, it's at that point, as you guys gather, you watch as uh, an individual comes flying down, uh, cape billowing as they do so. And you can see in the shadow of the darkness, oh, uh, sorry, in the shadow of the sun, I'll get you guys to roll a perception check, please. Perception check. Always love me a good perception check. It means fun things are about to happen. Varus roll a four. His head's actually a little tilted down, not really wanting to, like, de decimate your ice structure. Uh, I'm just just remembering how much Kaysen didn't want it to be hurt. Um, With adrenaline. But he did what he thought was best. So. Okay. So Zendardus and Praxilius, you see a figure and you recognize the figure to be Siraj Saharis. You can see her cape billowing, her black staff in her hand. Her curly black hair seems to go past her shoulders and she touches down gracefully just in front of Cleanerbot. You watch as Cleaner says, Mess is managed. And you watch as Sahara sort of looks towards him, looks towards the absolute mess of the market. And she says, well, it does seem that everything is taken care of. Ah. Uh, you watch as she sort of begins to soil her staff, and as she does, you watch as the various different sort of constructions begin to remake themselves. You see as everybody walks in and sees the staff mage performing this magical gift. Um, it's at that point as well that everybody in the area regains... Uh, uh, six points of healing. As Sorry, part that was of the 26? Solo. No, just six. Exactly what I needed. <laughs> just six. <laughs> Um, and as she does, you watch as she touches down and she looks to all of you, especially to you, Zen and Micah, who she's familiar with. And she greets the crowd who now gather around you. And she says, I think it is safe to say that the start of this academic term is like no other. But tradition must remain. And in doing so, this market day will not be able to come to a close without the telling of the song of the shadow. So please, join me at the theatre, where I will regale you in the tale of the wardress, the one who is known for protecting the Wissonia and for keeping us all safe from the threats of outside. 
something we can definitely celebrate today, given the fact that some of our brave students have stood up in the face of adversity and done exactly what we teach here at the Wasonia, which is to be outstanding citizens and use magic to help those in need. And she looks directly at you, Varys, seeming to know your contribution to this and turns to you, Praxilius, and gives you a warm nod. This um, quite beautiful human, you can see her dark skin sort of shines in the sun. She's got these brown, dark eyes as well. As she turns around, you watch as she slowly begins to make her way through the markets as the music then begins to uh, play in her wake. Uh, you watch as there is a crowd that follows her to the theatre that seems to be just across the way uh, where you had previously vacated your occupation, Varys. Um, and I imagine you guys would uh, follow. Yeah, before we do, um, does, does Varys notice any, just anything odd in the vicinity? Like, is there someone paying more attention to Siraj than they should be other than the gawking student? if that makes sense. He's looking for more of a, like, bite lip anger yeah, towards well, her. Yeah, okay. So roll, I'll say roll, anybody that wants to can roll an insight check at this point. Yeah, he got a good perception check, so I'm going to give him an insight check too, and just feel like it, uh, it works. You know what? I'm going to roll that with advantage too. Why not? I got it gifted. Use it. Um... 16 for Praxilius. This point of exhaustion sucks. Yep. <laughs> That's what you get for taking Don't more, do drugs, buddy. kids. <laughs> I feel like the DM's trying to yeah, put a lesson in here somewhere. No shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So, um, Varys and Praxilius, you guys are able to see that as you scan the crowd and Siraj turns, uh, you notice Teague looking through the crowd and he seems to be talking to an individual that you recognize, Prack, as uh, Professor Toulouse, the dark-haired individual with the round glasses who is your professor of advanced methods of extracting spirits. You are to see her tomorrow for class. You can see that she stands about five foot six. Uh, she's quite curvy in her in her physique, and she wears this black sort of dress. You did see her at the hysterical impulse concert wearing a band t shirt. Uh, she had her hair tied back in a in a tight ponytail at that point, uh, but she seems to be pointing and turning, and she looks quite distressed, like holding her chest as she does so. And Teague puts a hand on, and he's taking notes at the same time. It seems like he's conducting an interview. Uh, that is what you get uh, from that but then you scan the crowd as well. Nobody seems to be predatorily looking at Siraj, but they are inquisitive, as this is, for some, the first time they have seen the Staff Mage. Um, yeah. uh, and you two, having not seen her before, have nothing really to go off, only that you've seen her every here and there, so you don't know uh, her demeanour, but she seems like she wants to calm the students and... Put it. Put an end to this restlessness at the start of the the campus term. Uh, so that's what you get as everybody begins to flood out of the the marketplace. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, as you dig guys, it. So, sorry. Uh, dig it. All right. So as all of you begin to make your way together towards the theater, you see it for the first time, and Varys, you see it for the millionth time. You can see an arced doorway that seems to lead downwards uh, into an underground-like theatre. You can see as well that there is a booth outside that seems to have a, a patron there taking tickets. Uh, but you do see as well that everybody seems to be getting in for free at this point because it's a traditional show. You can see the double doors that lead downward are opened and there's this red carpet that goes down this stairway into an amphitheater-like set of semicircle stairs that leads onto a wooden stage that you can see red and black velvet curtains seem to caress over almost like a, a ball gown falls over a, over a lady. Uh, you can see that the chandeliers above seem to be lit with this luminous light that seems to be floating off of the candles, and you can see that there are various different flying automaton that seem to be bringing platters of drinks around to people that seem to be seated at the amphitheatre. It's starting to get very packed. And as you begin to take your seats, the four of you sitting together, um, 
we will break there for the night. Just before you watch the oh, show. Oh. oh. All right. I was Love like, yeah, we're getting a law dump. Let's go. <laughs> no. Next episode hot is just going to be a performance by the DM. I love it. Yeah. Oh, I'm bringing I'm hot it. chocolate next episode. <laughs> um, bring your popcorn next episode because I will be putting on a show performed by Siraj Saharas called The Wardress, the famous traditional uh, theatre production uh, done for the students of the Wasonia at the start of their, their term. Uh, okay. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us tonight in chat. We very much appreciate it. Um, we thank you for the redeems. We thank you for the natural 20s, spending your points on our giveaway. It's been absolutely awesome, guys. It's been so fun uh, to have you here. We also appreciate the raid and all of the follows, guys. We've actually hit uh, 300 followers 300. now. Yeah. Oh, hey. That's awesome. Nice. Excellent. All right. So that's awesome oh, yeah. for Valiant Odyssey, guys. 300 followers is epic, and it's a goal we've been sort of sitting all at right. for a while. Um, so... As a result of that, um, obviously we have our uh, our new Blood Pact stream coming. Blood Pact is a um, is a limited series that we're doing based on our community achieving particular goals. So we've got one episode in the works for you as a result of that. Uh, that one is being aired on the 7th of August. So make sure you tune into this channel, same place for that. It's going to be 11 a.m. Sunday for that one. Um, so yeah, make sure you check that out. Uh, our very next stream, the next time you're going to see me live, will be on Saturday at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time. We are going to do a Between the Sheets with two other podcasting groups, 20 Sides Pod and the Eldritch, Eldritch Buds. Uh, we're going to be talking D&D podcasting and putting your adventure to uh, a recording or a stream. So uh, if you're interested in that or you have any questions, feel free to come in and chat. And if you don't want to do that, you can at least come in and earn your renown so you can still take part in our giveaway which brings me to that our giveaway uh sponsored by Ozdas, our amazing amazing sponsors you can get a set of three polyhedral dice one set of steel six-sided dice a dice bag and a dice slab all for the price of your fake currency known as renown and gold so if you wanted to know that the code will be in the chat very shortly it is exclamation mark giveaway our mods are going to put that in for you right now and if you have any points go in and spend them straight away that'll be drawn on the 31st of august so make sure you get in on that guys thank you so much for being here um time to say goodbye to my amazing friends micah varis zendardis thank you as always you legendary parts of the odyssey and sven our most recent part of the odyssey and uh proprietor and owner of the crit and miss channel make sure you go and check them out as well they are our DD allies in this space uh, and they produce some excellent content that I appear in sometimes as well. Uh, Sven's a very talented DM in his own right, so check him out. Um, and join the Discord for the miniature giveaway. Yes. Woo! Definitely do that. Get amongst I, it. <laughs> and I'm the going... dice. So many dice. Yes. So dice yes. and minis is the giveaway for the month. So I've just shouted out Crit and Miss there, so click on that link to follow the channel to give him a, uh, a follow and the Discord link is in the chat there too. Make sure you come and follow us for the chance to win a $25 voucher for Hero Forge uh, with your your miniatures. Uh, thank you so much again for all the redeems, guys, the donations, the subscriptions, and also the uh, the just, just being here and chatting with us. It's been amazing. So um, before we sign off, we might raid somebody, but we'll do that on our ending screen. So if you want to stick around for the raid, please do so. It supports the D&D community and uh, drop those raid emotes in their chat. And we'll be back with these same smiling, amazing faces next Thursday, same time, 7.30 Australian Eastern Standard Time, every Thursday, uh, unless I advertise on the Instagram that we're having a break. Um, so, yeah, other than that, be valiant, stay awesome, look after yourselves. Thank you for the night. We'll see you guys Bye later. Bye, everybody. Stick around for the raid. Stick around for the raid. <laughs>